and we're live. Welcome everybody, Black Tie Kitchen. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dennis. Today we're doing a sort of kind of a hodgepodge of recipes, kind of a cooking AMA slash, let's have fun. Uh, we're gonna be doing a turnip scrotton, a duck breast, and a cocktail, maybe two. We'll see where it goes. So first thing we need to do, I know I said in the ingredient list I needed simple syrup. We're actually gonna be making our own simple syrup. We're making a rosemary simple syrup. So, trusty pan. Now I'm gonna be using allulose. If you're not doing low carb, just use sugar. It's a one to one ratio. Just sugar throw. Now I'm not, not gonna do anything fancy with the allulose. I'm not doing any xanthan gum or anything to thicken it up, just straight sugar water. I am adding a little bit more water because I am gonna I'm gonna pop this over here. I don't know if you guys can see this. I don't think so, but uh, hopefully I don't burn anything. I don't often cook with this thing, but it'll be fine. So how's everybody doing today? Good Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday, is it Tuesday? By the way, Aaron is running the board today, so I'm not seeing any comments anybody's leaving, so I'm relying on him. So anything goes wrong, it's not my fault. <laughs> Just kidding. So he's going to be yelling out questions, any comments you guys may have. Um, how many people are here? I don't even know. Oh, that's not fun. I wonder why. Oh, I think I know. That's not good. Okay. Well, I guess we just won't do the overhead cam. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, because if you start mucking around with it, it'll... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we could add it, but I don't... Uh... Oil. Uh, so we're going to bring this up to simmer. Slow simmer. I know you can't see it, especially now, because it'll cut the audio out. Unless if you switch, just give me like a hand signal and all. I'll like not talk. <laughs> yeah. All right. So while this is going, we're going to go ahead and get the duck kind of prepared. We're going to sous vide one of the breasts. So we're going to pan cook the other one by the instructions. We're going to compare which one comes out better. Now, I know duck is actually really expensive, which kind of sucks because it's such a delicious, delicious meat. This is actually farm-raised duck, so we don't have to worry about biting into, biting into any steel shot. They don't use lead anymore unless you weren't aware of that. Um, so yeah, duck. Kind of like chicken, not like chicken. You can actually eat it medium unlike chicken because that'll probably give you salmonella and all sorts of other bad stuff that you probably, you've probably you never experienced. It's not fun. Not fun at all. So... I actually don't know what kind of duck this is. Uh, I don't know what kind of duck they use in farms. Mallard? Any idea? No idea? <laughs> Beats me. All right, so let's get these puppies out of here. Get rid of all this blood. Actually, it's actually not blood. All the red stuff you see in meat, you tend to think it's blood. It's actually the hemoglobin, something like that. I forget, but it's not actually blood. It's just juices. Oh, this is where the overhead camera coming, coming well. But I'll do this. All right, so you see his breast. You see there's a lot of fat around the sides. You want to square it up. Make sure it's nice and even because what's going to happen is when you cook it afterwards, uh, if it kind of overlaps, it'll, it'll cause some little inconsistencies. So that's well, this is actually frozen duck. You just have to take it out of the, uh, the freezer a bit before. You actually can't get fresh duck unless you hunt it yourself. Um, just shipping and stuff, you just, just can't do it. Um, the demand for duck isn't as, as big as, a, as it should be. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the silver skin here. I don't know if you can see that. Just kind of pick it up. Kind of a little bit. 
field back. It's a lesson for next time. I need to get the camera fixed. I'm curious how I did the last live stream then, where I had the audio working well. Now you could store this fat and also render it out for duck fat, which is delicious. Don't ever throw that away. Um, so here's one breast. Ah. So here's one breast, nice and squared up. Now what we're gonna do is gonna cut uh, slits in the skin, but you don't wanna cut the meat. It's super important, don't cut the meat. The reason you wanna cut the skin from one edge to the other is when you're searing it later in the pan, it's gonna curl up. And if you don't score it, it's gonna shrink. So you're gonna end up with like this weird chicharron looking pork rind, duck skin that doesn't evenly cook. And it'll be, it'll be different as you go through the duck, like down the skin, because of the different thickness of the fat. But you really have to make sure you get to the edges. It's a, uh, it can be kind of finicky, but make sure you get to the edges. Don't cut the meat. I'm gonna cut uh, about a half inch down the skin. Um. Jessica Glenn asks, does duck silver skin peel away using a paper towel like the rack observes? No. <laughs> it's uh, when you, no, you gotta cut it. Oh, yeah, no, see it starts pulling the meat, which we don't want, so. Let's cut that off. Yeah, it's not a, this duck was actually kind of small. I said, I don't know what kind of duck this is, but uh, these farm ducks, just not like they used to make them anymore. Um, I did contemplate doing a whole duck, but those can be just a bit harder to find as well. But, so we got, so yeah, we're gonna do one sous vide at 1.30 for probably about an hour. And the other one we're just gonna pan fry, like I said, according to the directions. So they're gonna, they actually tell us to sear it first and put it in the oven afterwards. So I'm not actually gonna follow directions, I'm gonna do the opposite. I like the reverse sear method, I think it works a little bit better. Especially for ducks since you're gonna crisp up the skin. I feel like it uh, works a little bit better. And believe it or not, we're actually not gonna do much seasoning on this either. Just salt, pepper, a little time, a little time. Yeah, this, this, is, this is probably the most time consuming part of this, like hands on, is cutting the, the dang chicken fat. Chicken fat, duck fat. The nice thing about this is when you, uh, once you cook with it in the pan, just leave it in the pan and use it for eggs the next day. Duck fat is delicious. Or you can make the keto fries, which if you watch that video, Duck fat works really well. Or make regular french fries, all sorts of stuff. But. Bird lover asks, how does duck taste? How does duck taste? I don't even want to say gamey, because it's not gamey. It's very, it's very rich. It's very high in fat, because it's waterfowl, so it needs fat to float and stuff. Um, also to stay warm. But uh, I don't, yeah, I really don't want to say gamey. It's very, very unique. Um, and if you've never had duck confit, and you go to a restaurant that has duck confit, I recommend you try it if it's a good duck confit. Um, it's kind of like restaurants that have Wagyu. It's like, oh, everybody's got a Wagyu burger. And I was like, that's kind of wasteful. You're not going to get anything out of a Wagyu burger. It's, <laughs> it's like you're kind of ruining it. Um, yeah, duck confit is delicious. It's basically just duck cooked in duck fat. Um, which is kind of what we're going to do with this to a certain degree. Because we're going to cook it in its own duck fat. It's taking a while here. Pop this temperature up on the on a rosemary simple syrup because it's just kind of sitting there for a little bit. Now the thing with that rosemary simple syrup is we're going to have to let it cool. It's one of the reasons we're starting with that first. So by the time we get to the cocktail, it will be good to go. Now that, that, simp, that same technique you can pretty much use with anything. You can make thyme simple syrup, honey simple syrup, anything you want really. Um, 
And that'll last quite a bit. I just recommend you put it in the fridge because once you have uh, plants and stuff, you introduce some level of bacteria, which is another reason why we're kind of simmering a little bit to kind of get rid of, rid of some of that. So if you see this here, I've scored it vertically and also horizontally. Actually, if you want to switch to the other camera, I'll show it real quick here. So what this is going to do, it's going to allow the crisp up and not rotate on itself. Let me wash my hands real quick, which in case you watch any of the videos, I wash my hands all the time. Don't worry. I know a lot of guys, people ask, uh, oh, you touched the chicken and I know you didn't do it. <laughs> I just realized I probably can't hear you asking the question, so I'll have to repeat the question when you tell me. Because okay. I'm answering stuff and everybody's like, what is he talking about? Uh, let me clean this one up. Any other questions in the uh, the old chatteroo? Mm -hmm. Bird lover asks, is duck all dark meat? Bird lover asks, is duck all dark meat? Basically, yeah. The 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 breast meat is very akin to like a red well, a red meat, um, almost like a steak per se. There is no real white meat. Like you'll see when I cook it, I'm gonna cook one medium rare, so it'll kind of get that little pinkish, little little brownish color. Um, but if you didn't know, you'd probably think it was a piece of steak. I know they say, uh, oh, what's that crane? Um, the, what's the, what's this, those big, uh, the big gray cranes with the red heads? Oh, sand cranes, sand hill cranes. You can hunt those. Um, they hunt them in Texas and they call them the filet mignon of the sky because you couldn't tell the difference of the breast meat. It's like, it literally looks like a filet. I'd say it's delicious. Never had it, but that is, yeah, no white meat. Any other questions there? Um, none right now, but I saw one earlier asking about gator recipes. Gator recipes? No, I need to get a hold of, uh, there's a couple people here in Florida who, uh, who hunt gator and cook. I don't know if you guys ever hear of deer meat for dinner. He's pretty famous for his gator, gator hunting and cooking escapades. I know he just did a bunch of collabs with Guga Foods. If you guys don't know Guga, he basically does a bunch of expensive steaks with weird seasonings, dry gin, wasabi, MSG, all sorts of stuff. Pretty much I don't want to say ruins steaks, but it's a it's an interesting who done it, how done it. And then, uh, Soul Stitch asks, is it okay to not cook too well? Soul Stitch asks, is it okay to not cook too well? Yes, that's kind of what I think the beauty of duck is. It's not like chicken, so we're gonna cook one of these medium rare. Which if you did that with chicken, it would just be absolutely just disgusting, and it just well probably get sick. But with duck, it's actually okay. You actually don't want to overcook it because it, it actually kind of ruins it. Um, it ends up not being as, as tasty. It's kind of like if you had a nice steak and you overcooked it, you're like, oh, this is, this is wasteful. Um, Who might what? Joe Poldesi. Joe! Chair's my roommate, my old college roommate. One of my best friends. I'm actually been using rice cubes. How's the, uh, he actually just made um, some pickled pearl onions. And he said they were amazing. I need to try that recipe. So we have the duck here. I'm actually going to, to season it with salt and pepper very liberally. If you want to switch to the other camera. Too much talking, not enough cooking. I'll take the silver skin off of this piece. Um, yeah, we're just gonna use salt and pepper. The one that we're gonna cook later in the pan, I'm actually going to salt and season now and put in the fridge to kind of dry for the next hour or so while the other one cooks. 
I do have my sous vide cooker in the other room because it can be kind of loud. So I will disappear for about 15 seconds. And I go put that there. Kind of like Scooby Doo. I don't know, Scooby Doo never disappeared. Do you still have that show? Like new episodes? I would love to. I would love to do it. I keep forgetting I gotta answer the question. I'm gonna do a collab hunt for gators. So here in Florida, uh, hunting gator is a special tag. You have to apply for it. I forget how many they have. Um, it's a lot. I don't know anybody do gator hunts, so I'd be kind of, I'd probably be out there swimming with the gators. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'd be fun to do it. I would have no idea what to do with the gator, but to cook it, but we'll see. All right, so like I said, we're going to take one of these, put it in the sous vide bag. That's it. And I'm going to throw some thyme in here just to give it a little bit of flavor. Not too much. Yeah. That's good. And this other one I'm going to put on a plate, stick it in the fridge, let this puppy cool. My overly stuffed fridge with heavy cream for ice cream. Who's tried the ice cream recipe? Anybody in the, or made any interesting variations with the ice cream recipe? I know some people have tried uh, using raspberry juice instead of the water and they said that turned really, really well. Need to wash this knife. I'm pretty meticulous about my knives and Keeping them, the nice knives. Keeping them nice and clean and dry before you put them back in there. Saya. Apparently there was a giraffe making ice cream. There was a what? A giraffe making ice cream. A giraffe making ice cream. Oh, 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 I was like, there's a giraffe making? I was so confused. You're making ice cream now or you've made it before? You tried the recipe already? That's the question. That is the question. Ooh. It really, I, I, I honestly thought the pizza recipe, <laughs> I, I did a lot of iterations of that pizza recipe. But you tasted some of the, some of the ice cream, and it was, it was, some was really good, some was left a lot to be desired. The coffee was good. I, I'm planning on having that one for the, for the master class, but uh, since my camera was out of commission for a while. I haven't gotten around to filming much of it. Um, whoa. Stop. This thing break? I always have problems with this thing. All right, let's see here. Let's see. No, it's going to be loud, so it's, it's, sorry, turn it down. Oh, what? This thing is... Go to commercial break! I have a question. Yeah, what you got? Anything? Somebody says, how is everything in Florida? It was going well. So this thing decided to craft the bed. It's been hot. It's cooler today. It was 85 degrees yesterday and about 55 degrees today. I have no idea. That's a good question. Um, I want it to be accessible, but I also, it's, it's going to be for people who really like ice cream and really want to, if you tried that recipe, you're like, all right, this is really good. Um, 
and that's just the taste. Like it, the amount of locust bean gum and stuff that we use is really just because we don't want to go through the cooking, having the more specific like a thousand milliliters of cream, the air whipping, all that stuff. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't want to make it too expensive, but I want it to be accessible. Um, but also, it's going to be a lot of work. So we'll see. I don't know. I will continue talking as I go put this in my water cooler. Question, Aaron. Anything? How to fix it? I. With the seal, wipe the strip of the moist towel. What's your favorite band? My favorite brand. Favorite band. Uh, that seems like it's working now. I don't know. I know they have easier. What's the? I don't. I know you guys don't know, but there's the big one that you just like press and, go, and like sucks everything out. But this is like fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I have to replace the monitor that I dropped set up for tonight. <laughs> um, okay, let me see if this. See if I can bring this in here. Uh, where's my spoon? Hey, what? Switch this real quick. Over it. So you start to get a lot of really like aromatic. It'll be slightly bitter because the rosemary is going to get a little little bit bitter, but uh, should be good. I'm gonna. This a taste. Uh, you got a, you got a little cue of, of questions. What you got? Um, oh, so, that is delicious. Uh, what's the one low carb food you miss? Low carb food I miss. I'm going to guess the question is probably what's the one carb that's not low carb that I miss? Pizza. That's, that's, that's kind of the holy grail. Because if you get pizza, that means you figured out bread to a certain degree. And just, I mean, pizzas. Pizza is the holy trinity. You have bread, sauce, and cheese. You can't have one without the other. By the way, these, these, without going off the rails, these two ingredient pizza hacks, please stop. <laughs> like, it's not pizza, cheese, and pepperoni. It's just, it's not pizza. That, that is a, that is a insult, insult to pizza makers, to pizza, to all sorts of stuff. So, all right, so I have this here. I'm gonna take these rosemary sprigs out because we don't want these. And then speaking of uh, missing ingredients, where's chicken? Chicken is, I don't know. It's probably our parents. I keep forgetting I gotta answer questions. Yeah, chicken's probably our parents. Um, well, she travels a lot. So we have this here. I like these, these bottles work really well. You can get these at Ikea. It's not the best glass in the world, but we're not running a three Michelin star restaurant here, at least not yet, so. And we still have uh, the band question out The band question, yes. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, okay, so we got this here. Now this we just need to let it cool. In the meantime, you probably can't see it, but uh, see if you can switch to the other camera real quick. It'll show the difference. So it's slightly, slightly yellowish. It has sweetness, but it does have that rosemary flavor essence to it. Like I said, you can do the same thing with thyme, anything like that. Uh, I'm actually put this uncapped in the fridge so it cools off faster. And now, questions about more where people can find out more about the master class. The master class. If you go to, um, oh, did I put a link on the website? It's on the website. If you go to uh, blacktiekitchen.com slash Ice cream masterclass, shoot. I'll put a link in the description. I'll put it in there. Don't worry, I got you guys covered. Um, now we're getting to one of the key stars of the show. We have our duck cooking. Uh, it's gonna be sitting there about 45 minutes, an hour will be done by the time we get there. We have our rosemary syrup going. Uh, now it's time for the turnips. Now this, this turnip has seen better days. There's nice turnips, nice looking turnips, ugly turnips. Um, let's switch to the camera real quick. I'll show the. Doesn't matter if they're dirty or not, or ugly looking, because we're gonna peel them anyways. Now I have four turnips here. The one thing about this recipe and the variants you're gonna see in the heat uh, and time to cook is how dry the turnips are, how many turnips you use, the type of glassware, 
So it's going to be quite a few things. Uh, if, it, if, you come, if it comes out and it's still too wet, just put it back in. You'll tell when the cream is very, very thick, almost like a, a cheese sauce. Um, and that's pretty good. Going back to the band question. Oh, man. So many good bands. But I think if you, if you have to, if my life depends on it, it'd probably be the Chili Peppers. Right now, for some reason, I'm on a Foo Fighter kick. Um, don't ask me why. But it really varies. So these aren't prepared. I got these from a different store, namely Wally World. Cut the tips, tip and tail, stem the root. Now you can actually, I believe you can actually plant this. It'll grow. Um, as evidenced by the fact that it was growing in my fridge. Should be pretty, pretty easy. Uh, one thing that actually goes really well in places like Florida is um, ginger, hot and humid. Just put it out there. Uh, actually, before we cut these, I need to get the cream started. So we have this other pan here. Let's put that there for a second. Need some garlic. Now I know a lot of people have tried this recipe already. Uh, has anybody done any variations with it? I know some people were very skeptical and then they tried it and this is actually really delicious. Some people tried it and said they still didn't like the taste of turnips. Now the one thing to be aware of is that the, some places call rutabaga turnips. You know, they get them mixed up. So if they're a little yellowish, like these are white. If they're yellow, they're rutabagas. I know, I think in the UK, they actually interchange the name. I think they call rutabagas turnips and turnips rutabagas. Somewhere like that. Don't quote me on that, but I think I read that somewhere. But if it's the yellow ones, those are rutabagas. If they're white, they're turnips. That actually uses a lot in, in feed, like livestock feed. So I know now in the winter is their time to blossom, root, whatever you want to call them. Question. With, with COVID, kind of hit a hamper. Um, I'm actually friends with uh, Smokey Steve. Smokey Steve. Uh, Smoke Trails Barbecue. Great channel, great guy. I might be doing some stuff with him. Uh, we've actually talked about doing some weird, like, travel to Texas kind of thing. Because yeah, his whole channel is, like, smoking, really great stuff. Um, so if you're into smoking and barbecue, check out Smoke Trails Barbecue. Um, it is on the list. Thing is, it's uh, that kind of stuff requires a budget. <laughs> so, not really in the works at the moment. Obviously, COVID is still going on. So, Texas is a little bit different. Texas is kind of like Florida. Um, pretty much everything is open. But uh, it's still on the docket. Just have to get to it at some point. Uh, smoking is one of the things I do want to learn. I know, Aaron, you're on the same train of smoking. If you want to come on the smoke uh, pilgrimage, the, the barbecue pilgrimage, I've never tried really good uh, smoked brisket. I know Joe, he said he, uh, he was in North Carolina and he uh, went to a barbecue place with one of the guys who worked with um, Barbecue Jesus, Franklin. And he said, another great Aaron. yeah, <laughs> Aaron Franklin, yeah. And he said that uh, he said that it was, it was worldly. Of all the brisket he's had in May, he said that just by far blew everything away. So he's like, I can't even imagine what Aaron Franklin's smoked brisket is like. Which again, it goes, it goes to a point of, people ask how good smoked brisket is. People line up and wait for hours to eat smoked brisket. Nobody lines up to eat for steak. They might make a reservation a couple weeks now, but nobody's waiting in line for three, four hours to have brisket. That's how good it is. So if you've ever had brisket and go, this sucks, you haven't had good brisket. That's just the truth. I hate to break it to you. Julio Keefe asks, what's your culinary background? Julio Keefe asks, what's your culinary background? Uh, just growing up in the kitchen. I don't have any formal, formal cooking. If you go back through my earlier videos, you'll see, for example, like I don't know what I'm doing with a knife. Just, just I like to cook. That's basically how I grew up. I don't have any. People talk about like, oh, what's the story when you realize you like cooking? And it's like, I don't have that story. I just always grew up in the kitchen. A lot of times I wasn't even cooking. I was just watching my grandmothers were those people who, uh, like, hey, I, I want, like, lobster bisque. Never made it. Mm, there you go. It's the best lobster bisque you've ever had in your world. <laughs> the world. So it's crazy like that. So we have the garlic here. Just smash. It doesn't need to be pretty because it, it's not going to be used in the final dish. We're going to add quite a bit of thyme. A couple sprigs. Uh, four, five, six, seven. Just add whatever in there. I like to eyeball things, which really sucks when I'm writing these recipes because I have to 
take precise measurements for everybody, um, but it's cool. So I have that, I need to get my cream. I'm gonna be adding about two cups of heavy cream. Um, this is another one where you kind of have to eyeball it. If you have more turnips and it looks a little dry, just add more. It's just, it's, it's cooking, play it by ear. Um, one thing too, a lot of people ask like, oh, how much salt? How much salt ends up being kind of a, an inert skill? It's kind of weird. You kind of learn to just eyeball things. Like I don't really have, like I think for the recipe, I think I said half a teaspoon. Um, if you don't use something like this with kosher salt, please trust me, try it. My mom fought me for years and she finally started doing it. She's like, you're right, this is it. <laughs> Cause you can actually measure it as opposed to like doing something like this. Like, I don't know, this feels like a lot. Uh, yeah, just some black pepper. If you wanna switch to the overhead just to show. <laughs> um, but the one key ingredient, oh, there's pepper here. The one key ingredient, I think, to this dish is the nutmeg because it kind of comes out of left field. No one expects it. And I think this is the one that kind of really rounds out the holiday, the holiday smell and the holiday taste. Like when, when you taste this, if you've never had this before, or if you have had it and it didn't taste good, it should taste amazing, even just the smell. And if it doesn't, then probably needs more spices. Do quite a bit of nutmeg here. Which if you haven't uh, if you haven't watched a video where I use any nutmeg, it's actually called it used to be the king's spice. It was a very popular spice of royalty, and uh, it was stupid expensive, like the price of gold. And um, they came over to the New World, the U.S., and they transitioned to pepper because it was cheaper. That's my understanding of the story, and that's where I'm keeping. It. So I'm going to put this over the stove top over super low heat. We don't even want to simmer. We just want that rosemary to infuse with the cream along with the garlic, the pepper, all that sort of stuff. And then we need to clean here because... All right, so rutabagas. Now this is... Now, we can go around the world, but it's not as quick. So we're gonna go pole to pole. Just easy peasy. If you're doing the same thing if you're doing potatoes, you can basically, again, if you don't, well, this rutabaga is not very good. Um, if you don't like rutabaga, turnips. If you don't like turnips, you can do this with potatoes, same thing, no biggie. Um, let's use this for any Thanksgiving feast. Now, the difference between uh, gratin and scallops, some people, I forget if it's, forget if it's scallops, they usually cook the potato first because potato takes so long to cook, and it's just kind of a pain in the ass. This turnip is actually, mm, might be bad actually. I think I might have picked a bad turnip. Dennis, what are your thoughts on Townsend's? My thought on Townsend's. It's really interesting channel. Uh, if you thought on Townsend's, if you haven't watched it, it's basically like old timey recipes. Um, so they'll find like old cookbooks type of thing, like from the from the I don't want to say the Middle Ages, but like colonial times, and. Uh, and the cooking, I remember the last one I watched was a while ago. Believe it or not, I try not to watch much cooking uh, stuff because I don't want to be influenced by anybody. Um, even though I do read recipes and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think the last one I watched was, uh, was venison and corn. They were talking about it was like a Native American, just literally corn and venison in a pot over fire. It was really interesting. It's a lot of it. Well, the, the interesting part about it too is it's a lot of... Uh, a lot of recipes that have kind of been lost. We've seen this in the sh in a smaller time frame of cocktails. Like people going back, to like, oh, what's this cocktail from like the late 1900s or uh, you know, like, uh, in, like the 1920s, that sort of stuff. So we've kind of seen a, a revival of some of the stuff. Like a lot of the tiki tiki cocktails was like old timey stuff that people just kind of like, oh, well, this looks good, and start experimenting with it. Um, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's a good channel. A lot of good channels out there. I'm trying to think of, if you haven't watched Uncle Roger, you know it's a character. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm really, I would really love to, to, to ask him like what, what he thought like the first time he had a, his video kind of went viral. We're like, oh shit, here's this, uh, and if I'm, by the way, I'm my curse, sorry. Um, 
where it's like, <laughs> here's this fake character that I made up and the world is going bananas. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, yeah, Uncle Roger. You just need to butcher some Asian dish. I, I know, I just need to butcher some, some fried rice and have him be like, what, is he using cauliflower instead of rice? What's funny is watching other channels trying to get on Uncle Roger, like they'll tag him and be like, well, Uncle Roger approve of this. It's like, I know you're trying to write some coattails, but just be you. Any other questions? As I patiently, painfully. That can work too. You can probably do a, a combination of like turnips and cauliflower. That would probably work pretty well too. At least it sounds like it would work. Um, did you did you try the mashed cauliflower? I did. You didn't like it. Oh. You don't like anything low carb. I do. I don't like cauliflower. You don't like cauliflower. It does kind of smell like farts. You do kind of have to get over the. But it it, it didn't smell like anything that day. But so I this think is. The carb versions are the best version. The carb versions are are better. Well, to a degree, like the turnips gratin is, is its own dish even before anything low carb. And I, I still think that's actually better. I think it has just the right amount of sweetness, right amount of texture, and all sorts of stuff. But well, we, do, we do have a, another question. Another question. How did you meet the chicken? How did I meet the chicken? Well, it was a long time. Bird her to show up. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. It's kind of like the same thing. Like I don't know what inspired the whole cooking thing. It just kind of happened. Um, but it is what it is. So these are peeled. Now comes the dangerous part. If you have a mandolin and you've used it, probably know the warning I'm going to give. If you don't have a mandolin or are going to get one or have never used it, please listen to what I'm about to tell you. It is dangerous. <laughs> this is not a joke. Every person I know, every person, including myself, who has ever used the mandolin has sliced off a piece of their finger into their mashed potato slices. Not a joke. Do not be a superhero. Do not think you can get away with it because you will not get away with it. It requires a blood debt payment. Get one of these gloves. These things are fantastic. They're super cheap. It's better than all the nonsense crap that it comes with, but do not, do not try this without any sort of protection. Um, so the one thing with these is you can cut them like this flat. If you see, it'll, it'll basically the, the cross section is to be really wide. So if you cut it this way, it's gonna be a little bit more oblong, a little bit easier to slice or, uh, not slice, but uh, place, place, place later. Yeah. And actually, I need to preheat the oven to 375 American. Mountains. And apparently there's chicken fingers in the oven, so. <laughs> not my chicken fingers. Uh, always check the oven, make sure there's nothing in there. Do you want chicken fingers? <laughs> Yeah, definitely mountain, which is ironic because the, considering I live in Florida, I can't remember the last time I went to the beach. It's just so much trouble. It's like sand everywhere, and you get a near sunburn, even if you use sunscreen. Ah, it's just got to fight for parking. If you're uh, in the mountains, like if you're going hiking, any sort of trail that actually has any sort of difficulty to it, it's not going to be anybody out there, very rarely. Very rarely, um, especially if you get there early. So I actually may have too many turnips for this, but we'll see. Hopefully this isn't too loud. Any other questions? Um, we have a blood for the blood god. The blood for the blood god. Which, if you have sliced your finger, let me know in the comments. Let Aaron know. So let other people know that this is not a joke. It's because it really is for
real. It's it's. And the worst is it'll turn white, and you're looking like, oh, it's kind of cool. It's not bleeding. And then the pain will set in, and you realize that your finger is somewhere in the potatoes, but you can't find it. So it's like, all right, well, <laughs> you know, someone's 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 having some human today. It's all right. Be thankful. Maria, did I grow up in Florida? For the most part, I've been here for 25 years now, I think, just about. Went to college here and everything, so yeah, pretty much. Pretty much a Florida boy at this point. And as much as I don't like the heat, it is kind of nice that we don't have to deal with snow and no income tax. That one's a big one. <laughs> you don't realize how much income tax is until you Look at your tax and you go, oh, yeah, okay, all right. Well, that's that's a substantial amount that they took away. Um, yeah, I actually just I would have sliced my finger there if it wasn't for this glove. Um, I actually need to make this dish for Thanksgiving. Hopefully, hopefully nobody realizes it's turned up and goes, oh, these potatoes are interesting. But I doubt it. You'll yeah, you'll know, Aaron. I'm going to Aaron. Another question. Yes, I do. So I have a plan for doing, I don't want to say around the world, but I had a plan of doing very, uh, for lack of a better word, very ethnic recipes. Um, Mexican has a lot of stuff that tends to lend itself to being low carb, which is not actually well known because we're so used to, to Mexican being tacos and burritos, but Mexican food is delicious. It's, it's such a varied cuisine. Mexican Indian also has a lot of really good stuff that can be made keto, um, especially since it's all vegetarian mostly. A lot of chicken, um, a lot of like butter chicken is pretty much straight keto. Uh, a lot of Eastern European dishes are, can be made keto. But the thing about that stuff is they're not very, they tend to be unique. So a lot of people would look and go, ah, that's cool, but I'm not gonna make that. Like I wanna make something that people would go like, oh, that looks really interesting. I can find those ingredients. Let me try that. And that's one of the great things I think too about sort of the internet and this sort of YouTube stuff is that there's a lot of cooks from around the world that now have an outlet and people go, huh, Thai cuisine, like that looks really interesting. I know I can go to the Asian store and get some bok choy. Like I never, I had no idea what this was before. Where now it's like, oh, I've seen this before. I know how to cook this or I have an idea of how to cook this. So I think the, the world is more prepared for more diverse and ethnic cooking now, which is a good thing, because there's so much delicious stuff out there. Um, like, if you were to ask me what, what American cuisine is, I actually don't know. Is it steak and potatoes? Like, I don't, I have no idea. I have no idea. But yes, I do plan some Mexican stuff. But the other half of it, too, is a lot of things that I have want to try and make low-carb might be something that I've never had. So it'd be very difficult for me to make something low-carb if I've never had it. I remember a while ago, somebody asked me to make a, how do you, how do you pronounce that Hawaiian pie? Hoop, hoop. I don't know how you say it. I'm butchering. I'm sorry. But like, I've never had one, so I don't know how to make it low carb. Like, it would just be a disservice to, like, well, here are the ingredients, and I try to make it low carb. It tastes good, but then somebody tries to go, this does taste something like it. Like, this is, this is nonsense. Um, Irene from Canada asks, would infused heavy whipping cream be stronger overnight, or does it make any difference? Would infused heavy whipping cream be stronger overnight, or does it make any difference? It probably would be stronger. Um, I don't know if you really have to, though. I mean, I guess if you run out of time, but I don't really think it's, it's necessary. I, I know I've had a couple questions if you can pre-make this before. I would make it and freeze it, because if you put the cheese on top, then it would probably overcook. Another thing you could do is par-cook it, or cook it for maybe like 30 minutes. Partially cook, don't put the cheese on top. Take that, put it in the fridge. When you get to where you're going, fully cook it, put the cheese on top and broil it. And that would probably get you to where you want to be. Um, yeah, infusing it overnight would probably be stronger, but then it might be too strong. Who knows? So I have a cast iron skillet here. I threw some butter in here. I'm actually a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to be cooking this in a casserole dish. I'm cooking this in the cast iron pan. Uh, this should be I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm just basically going to coat it. What I want to do here is I'm add butter, throw it in the oven, let it melt. And we don't have to rub it around and all that stuff. Let that nonsense make it a little bit easier. Ah, that's in there. 
Let's check on this this cream. It's starting to smell delicious. Does it smell like Christmas in here yet? You'll smell it in a second. Let me raise the heat a little bit, actually. So I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of smoke. Probably can't, but there's a little bit of smoke. Just close your eyes and listen to my voice tell you there's a little bit of smoke. Um, it's not simmering. This is very low heat. So leave that there. It's coming along. Um, so now while that butter is kind of going, we set this aside. Get this rid of this. This turn up we don't need. Is the cooking time different? It should be pretty similar. I'm not going to preheat the pan in there. I'm just basically getting it so the butter cooks. Um, that's kind of like where the cooking time is going to vary. It depends on uh, the cooking vessel. Obviously, uh, was it Pyrex? Pyrex is one of the best in terms of cooking because it uses both radiation and uh, heat. Ra radiation and infrared. Right? The two forms of heat you get in the oven. Uh, cast iron basically just uses heat, but it maintains it better. So the cooking time will vary a little bit. That's where you really have to kind of look at the cream, see it, make sure it's nice, thick, not watery. If it's water, just leave it in there longer. It'll be fine. Uh, so that's that. In the meantime, let me see how this simple syrup is doing. It's still a little warm, but, so we'll give it a second. Any other, any other questions? Uh, I'll take a sip. What my workout routine is basically stay fat and eat a lot. Um, <laughs> it, my, my workout routine, I, it kind of follows a somewhat basic powerlifting routine. It's just squats, deadlifts, press, push press. Um, I don't do a lot of bodybuilding stuff. I'm just aiming for like big bang for the buck. Nothing crazy. I love squatting. It's one of those if people like hate doing it and like use the machine, learn to squat, learn to squat right. So you don't hurt yourself, and that'll be the best exercise to do, especially you strengthen your legs, which means you can stand up from the toilet when you're older, which is really important, and you don't realize it until you're older and you can't stand up from the toilet. Uh, if you're a dude, it helps increase testosterone and just all sorts of stuff. And more vascular, uh, bigger muscles means you use more blood flow, which they've seen some studies that increases uh, uh, like brain function, because more, I don't know, some, something like that. I don't know, I've heard it somewhere, but I'll find the study, maybe. I'll link it below. But yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. I did splurge and get a, a oh, squat no. rack for my, for my car, my garage. What other questions you got? No questions, just a lot of people trying to define what American food is. But they what American, what, so what, what are no they defining? Consensus. No consensus. <laughs> See, I think that, I think now also is that American food is so, is so representative of the, of the U.S. And like it's such a, like, you go the Southwest, what's American food in, like, New Mexico? Like, what's standard affair in New Mexico? Tacos. Tacos, Burritos. right? Burritos. Burritos. You, you, go, you go in the Northwest, what's, like, standard? It's like, oh, there's a lot of fish, fish markets and stuff. You go up Northeast, it's a lot of oysters, lobsters, uh, seafood. You go to New York, it's, like, pizza. New York is kind of a weird one, but, you know, it's really weird. You go to Texas, a lot of barbecue. So it, it's so decentralized. Where I think that's one of the cool things. It's, like, there is no central... No central food. Will you make a workout video? Will I make a workout video? <laughs> no, probably not. If anyone has ever, uh, it's funny because uh, if you've ever done uh, kickboxing or Muay Thai or boxing, you know you wear really short shorts. It, it's, that's how I work out and people look at me really weird. I'm outside in short shorts and like tank tops. Like what's this dude doing with a mustache under and tank tops? And, there goes the neighborhood. Um, will I make a workout video? Ah, maybe. Maybe in the long run. We'll see. We'll see how this channel goes. But I'm clearly not someone to be giving workout advice. I don't think. This? This and I actually need to make ice cream. I'm going to be making my ice cream. Uh, I'm probably making, I was going to do an eggnog ice cream, but considering time-wise, I may not have as much time as desired, so I'll probably make a chocolate, uh, a vanilla. I'm contemplating throwing chocolate chips in there, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, let me check this cream. So the pan now is covered with a little bit of butter, Oop. just around the edges. Now we basically just need to start layering. So if you want to switch to the other camera real quick.
So yeah, so we're just gonna rotate around. Kind of get in here like this. Make sure so you can't really see the bottom of the pan. Just be careful, because the pan is probably hot. So we have this nice little layer. If you want to cut back real quick while I get the cream. Is the ice cream single? Like a single serve? I'm a serving <laughs> single serve? I don't know. So we have this. Uh, if you want to switch real quick. All right, so we're not doing anything too crazy, just a little bit of drizzle. In case you're wondering, in case you joined late, I screwed up the setup. And you can't hear the audio when you switch to a different camera, so this is why we're focused on this camera. When I switch, you won't hear me. A lot of, lot of desire in chat for those short shorts. And a lot of desire for those short shorts. <laughs> if you've never done martial arts, I highly recommend it, especially if you have any sort of anger problem or aggression, just do it. It's so much fun. I miss doing it. I have bad hips now, so I can't do it anymore. Uh, boxing, Muay Thai, Judo. One of these days, I'll turn into Wolverine and have a... Uh, some sort of hip replacement or something, but let's see. So, in the video, I used Parmesan cheese. For this now, I'm going to use Pecorino Romano. Pecorino Romano. It's a little bit funkier if you've never used it. It's not as common in a lot of places, but it does add that little bit of funk, a little bit of little, little je ne sais quoi. Uh, but it's delicious. Um, it's actually basically Parmesan cheese made with sheep's, sheep's milk. Sheep, sheep's milk. I can get this wrapper opened. I even got a brand new, brand new slice of cheese for this video and stuff. Um. Mark asks, have you ever tried making simple syrup for cocktails out of non-sugar sweeteners? Mark asks, yes. So making simple syrup for cocktails out of non-sugar sweeteners. The one we're doing right now is using allulose. Um, I have a whole video on using allulose versus the richer full and that sort of stuff. Uh, allulose works best because of the solubility of it. I'll, this is one of these things I actually plan on going into the master class video for ice cream. Erythritol has a solubility of 49% in water, which is dog poop, um, especially, for, especially for, uh, for simple syrup because you want sugar has a two to one solubility. So at 49% solubility, it's not going to be sweet enough. It's not going to provide any substance to it. And it's going to recrystallize, which sucks. I mean, in a pinch, it works great, but if you have allulose, that works better. So... I just put a little sprinkle on top, uh, if you want to switch real quick, just to show. So just a little bit, nothing crazy. Uh, now we're just going to layer again. Now one of the, tra another way of making turnips gratin is you can add some chicken stock. But I find that's just extra work. It doesn't really add that much flavor to it. Um, and you can actually put cheese in between the layers. I find that the Parmesan and Pecorino works a-okay. It adds just enough umami to it, just enough cheesiness, and doesn't require any more. I know Aaron would probably like a little more cheese in between. But we'll... we'll like an <laughs> Asiago. An Asiago would probably work well. Something in the, in the dry-aged realm works well. And if you're going to use cheese, use a mild cheddar, something mild. You don't want anything too, too strong because it'll pull away from the flavor of the, of the Christmas and the... The, the awesomeness of the, the cream flavor here. Sprinkle some more. Um, any other questions coming through? Um, a little more on your background, you know, what, what got you into YouTube, who inspired you? What got me into YouTube? All right, so what got me into YouTube? So I actually had, I actually had a workout channel, believe it or not, uh, like workout slash nutrition. We didn't really do any workouts, but we did a lot of nutrition stuff. The videos are still out there. It's Eat, Sleep, Lift, Live. It was supposed to be Eat, Sleep, Lift, Live. Um, so I, that was actually like over 10 years ago. It was like before YouTube was really a thing. Um, I've always been interested in, in cooking, and I always wanted to have more of a cooking show on that. But uh, I was too dumb at the time. I didn't really know how to find resources. I didn't know how to film. I didn't know how to get the right cameras, the right audio. So I remember just getting upset, and I just stopped doing it. I wish I hadn't. But I always had the idea in the back of my head of getting back to it, or at least having a cooking show. But the thing that really spurred the cooking thing was doing uh, 
martial arts and stuff, people would always cut weight for fights, fights or matches, that sort of thing. Um, and so they'd be eating boiled chicken and steamed broccoli, which is somewhat of a rite of passage, but it's absolutely atrocious. If you've ever had to do that or eat boiled eggs and sardines, that kind of stuff, it's, it's, it's miserable. And I always wondered, like, why are you putting yourself through this misery already and then eating, just add some spices, add some spices. It's not that difficult. A little, 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 little pepper, a little something. But they would do nothing. Um, so that kind of spurred me on, like, hey, let's, uh, how about I make a cooking channel and kind of start showing what, I've, what I know we can do with that sort of stuff so people can wait, can cut weight, and still enjoy their lives and not be as miserable. So that's kind of where that, that whole YouTube thing started. But yeah, I had a... So I had a workout channel, and I also had a vlog for a while. It kind of turned into moto vlog and all sorts of stuff. And then now we're here, 160-something episodes in. Um, not as often as I'd like to do them anymore because it just they take up so much time. Ooh, what am I doing here? Oh, I lost the spoon. Um, but yeah, I was doing a lot of non-low-carb stuff. I remember it was, the, it was the Apple Crisp video. And I think I made like six or seven of them in like these, these, uh, in these things. And I had to eat them all. And I remember around the third one, I was like, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> I was like, there's no amount of working out that I can do that can work off this, this, this dessert. Um, and that's kind of when I transitioned to doing low-carb. Also because of, you know, blood work was like, hey, you're kind of almost pre-diabetic. It's like, ooh, all right. The whole eat to work out is not, or I work out so I can eat. It's actually not healthy. Learned that later. Um, so yeah, so now we're here. This is where we're at. It's just, the unfortunate part about this dish is just it kind of takes some time to do. It's not too bad. Dennis, where do you buy your cheese? Where do I buy my cheese? So, I wish I told you I had some like special place I went to or something. I honestly just usually buy stuff at Costco. I know it's not the best, but it's pretty much the only place I shop. Um, well, are they paying you for this? No, I know they're no, they're they're not paying me for it. I wish they did. I, I try to not show brands anymore because it's unless you know because it is what it is. It, it's 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 ironic. It's funny having brands like reach out and want all the stuff for free and whatnot, but um, yeah, I usually shop at Costco. Like I said, it's not not necessarily the best, but it's where I'm at. Gas is expensive now. I'm not really going to travel around looking for something specific. That's happened to me before. Where it's like, oh, I need to go here. And like, oh, they don't have that. Cool. Now let me go across town. Like, oh, they don't have it either. It's like, well, this will do. So I'm pretty pragmatic about this stuff unless I'm looking for something specific. Now, if you had places to get stuff Specifically, uh, like for example, I know earlier I said bok choy, things like that. Uh, if you have an Asian store near you, dirt cheap. If you go, if you're familiar with Publix, you might go to Publix and it costs you three dollars for a small bushel. Go to the Asian store, you can probably get a whole sack full for like thirty cents. No exaggeration. Um, so yeah, I. I Costco is really Costco and Publix right around the corner. Uh, all right, I've got, I've got a few more. Another questions. question. Um, I'm sure you get this all the time, but your pasta is amazing. I'm sure you get this all the time, but the pasta is amazing. Thank you. I know the pasta is finicky. I'm working on it. I, I want to make it more, more replicatable. More replicatable. The the biggest variance there is the eggs. Uh, large eggs have such a large variance in terms of size that it. it it can really lead to a huge difference. Um, but the humidity in the pasta really matters. Like it's a little bit too dry, literally a couple of drops of water will make a huge difference. But so I'm working on it. I'm, ravioli's on the table next. That's, that's, the, that's the, the next iteration of that. So um, is there another question? I think you were. Do you speak French? Do I speak French? So I took French for four years. Mais je ne parlais pas plus bon. Quatre ans, mais je n'appris pas. Je ne parle pas, mais no, so I don't. <laughs> I know enough to, I know enough to where somebody's speaking to me in French, I can kind of tell what they're saying, but then I can't respond. Which I used to work at a place where uh, one of the guys, um, 
he spoke a lot of languages and he'd bring people in French from like Canada. He's, he's literally making fun of me to my face and I know what he's saying, but I couldn't say anything back and I just smiled like, God, you son of a... <laughs> I was like, I'll get you later, don't worry. But then he starts, oh, what am I doing? Turn it. There, I dropped it again. Um, yeah, no, I don't want to really speak French. On the subject of YouTube, will you ever start another channel for data analysis stuff? Data analysis stuff. What kind of data... Sorry, the question was... Speaking of YouTube, will I ever start another channel for data analysis stuff? Um, I'm assuming that's for data analysis of YouTube videos. I, I don't think I know enough to do anything about that. Although it'd probably be a more profitable channel. I do actually have another channel in the works at the moment, but I'm still working through it. Which I, I know uh, Steve was talking, Steve from Serious Keto was on with uh, Chris and his wife from Keto Chow. And uh, they asked him, you know, what advice to people starting a YouTube channel? And his advice was, don't start one. Uh, we talk about this all the time. We have little conference calls. And yeah, if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel, don't. <laughs> Except we all end up making second channels. The, the thing about, uh, and this is kind of an offshoot of the data analytics. Um, you can't get into this thing and be successful overnight. A lot of people think, oh, I can do a start a channel and be good at it immediately followers. I think I went a year and a half with under 100 subscribers of weekly videos. Um, and I think just in the past years, really, we kind of started finding like how I make things um, with my style. Well, now, if, obviously, if you watch my stuff, it's a little weird. But as far as data analytics, YouTube is an interesting one. I don't think I know enough or else I would have probably 3 million subscribers type of thing. Um, but the interesting part to me about the stuff is telling stories and having that sort of underlying thing of how you generate that story and make it interesting. Um, what, were we, what were we watching? There's been a couple of shows recently that uh, just really kind of crap on the bed in terms of story. Uh, oh, what's that? There's a show on Netflix with a bunch of cowboys. I can't remember what it's called. But, uh, and the reason I bring that, because if you were to look at the analytics of that, I'm sure people would just stop watching that after like 30 seconds, because they, they give a problem, then they immediately solve it. They give another problem and they immediately solve it. So you're like, why am I even watching this? This, is, this, is, this isn't fun. Um, it was interesting. Data Linux, no, I don't, I'm probably not gonna do that. I, I'm more apt to start a channel on what my current career is in IT than I am to start a channel on analytics. Any other questions? Um, have you done much research into the various spices that help with such things as sugar control, et cetera, like cinnamon, et cetera? Have I done any research in the spices to help with sugar and blood glucose control, et cetera? No. Um, and the reason why is a lot of those studies and stuff are taken to extremes. Uh, for example, turmeric is, it's turmeric, there's an R in there. It's not turmeric, it's turmeric. Uh, those, those studies are taken to extremes. So like, for example, I'm gonna reference the MSG studies. If you look at those studies, it's the equivalent of giving 180 pound man, like 1500 milligrams of MSG or salt, which is bad for anybody. So I, I don't, I don't know, I don't place much on specific ingredients for things like that. I just cook, if it looks good, tastes good, it fits within calories, just go with that. That's, that's my approach, which why I use wheat gluten, it's just protein, MSG, all that sort of stuff, I have no, no problem. It's the, I forget what the, the thing is, it's the dose that's the poison. Herod, I don't know, some Greek name, Greek principle, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Uh, studies too, you have to almost have a statistics degree to understand what they're saying. So I'm not smart enough for that. Why don't you have cabinet doors? Why don't I have cabinet doors? <sighs> All right. <laughs> so when I moved in here, I remodeled the kitchen, and these cabinets were actually painted, uh, were not this color. In the process of painting, sanding, and all that sort of stuff, I used oil paint. And oil paint, if you've ever used oil paint, it's very finicky. Uh, and in order to do it correctly, I had to have it in like a dust-free area. Uh, pour all this in here. Sorry, I'm like trying to talk and just at the same time. Um, I just never finished painting the doors. That's basically it. I'm very finicky about that stuff, so I had to do like two, three coats, so paint it, sand it, paint it again, sand it, paint it again, to make it look good. And uh, 
I got as far as the primer, and then I started doing the shows, and then I moved in, and there was nowhere for me to put the, uh, the cabinet so I can actually get it going. So that's why I have no cabinets, no cabinet doors. But I think it has a nice, nice little modern view. I, I wish I had doors on the bottom of the cabinets, but the top, I kind of like it. You can see where things are. It's a little dusty, but you know, whatever. Um, so this is going to be the top layer here. I'm going to add a little more Pecorino Romano. And then we're going to add some Gruyere, which again, you can use cheddar if you'd like. Just use mild cheddar. Um, Gruyere, is, Gruyere is an interesting cheese. It's a little, it's like semi, I don't know if it's considered semi-aged, but uh, it too has a little bit of funk to it. It works really well in this dish. And quite a bit of, whoop. I'm getting cheese everywhere. It's a mess. Where's the Gruyere? Here it is. So this is a triple source from Switzerland. Again, Costco, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too, too finicky when it comes to, like I said, it's there when I need it. So it's there. So this is where we're gonna kick it in the high gear. What about a question about question. if you're ever gonna do a meet and greet? A meet and greet. I would love to do a meet and greet. Obviously, again, kind of like along the lines of the the pilgrimage for barbecue and smoked meats. COVID kind of poses some some uh, logistical issues there. I also have to find a place to do it. Um, I don't know where to do it, but yeah, I'd love to do it. Um, like a nice back alley. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> a back alley would be interesting for a meet and greet. That's typically where people get mugged and yeah, dumpsters. They meet, they meet and then purchase, uh, purchase goods and services. Contraband. Purchase contrabands. <laughs> for some reason, that reminds me of the, if anyone's ever watched Seinfeld, there's the episode of Seinfeld where they, um, they change the shower heads and it's like low pressure shower heads and like trying to buy high pressure shower heads from some guy in a van in the back of an alley. I forgot what, somebody the other day told me was they had a low pressure shower head and they had to go find some, some shower head from a German manufacturer or somebody. <laughs> it's like, I, I hear you, man. Oh, it was Jason. He said he has to like twirl in the shower, like wash his hair. I'm like, what are you talking about? All right, so if you look at this, if you switch over real quick. It looks like a cheese pie, because there's a lot of cheese on there. That's how we like it. So this, this pan is cool now. So go in the oven. And we're gonna set a timer. Set a timer for 45 minutes. We'll check it then. And in the meantime, gotta kinda clean. I actually need to make this dish. I was saying it for, for Thursday, so I need to do this again after. So this is all going away. Any other questions coming through? Anybody cooking along? Who's cooking? Who's cooking with this? I, I, now I realize I forgot to, to post the ingredients on YouTube. I posted them on Instagram and Patreon. Um, people using different cheeses. Yeah, like I said, you can use basically any cheese. Just make sure it's more of a mild. A little funk is good, but nothing too strong. A really strong aged cheddar doesn't, a really sharp cheddar, I find doesn't work too well. Um, somebody's doing squats. So, interesting you say that. So I used to listen to various podcasts when I worked out. Uh, typically comedy podcasts, but I had to stop because I'd find myself in the hole which is at the bottom of the squat and laughing and then being stuck. <laughs> so I've transitioned to more serious podcasts. Um, reggae, reggae works really well for, for doing exercise because it sets that pace, that the typical reggae beat. Um, but doing squats, that's an interesting one. Joe asks, how long do you cook the turn of steak for and what could you do how long to cook the turnips for? What to do with extra turnips? 
Well, ideally, you wouldn't have any extra turnips. I just cut too many. Um, so these you can make another small one. You can make like little, little self-serve dishes like this, which if you really want to be really fancy, say you have a small dinner party, um, it's always nice if you have like their own little dish on a white plate kind of thing. Like here's just your very solitary turnips crop, which you could potentially do actually, now that I think about it. Cook them in a, oh, what are these things called? I can't remember right now. Um, ramekin, yes. Cook it in a ramekin, let it get really nice, and then flip it over, coat some cheese on it, and uh, use a torch to kind of scorch that cheese. They're like a nice little tower of turnips. If you don't cut them all, what you could do is use them as potatoes. You could use them in soups, uh, like caldo gallego that I did. It was this potato replacement. I remember when my parents tried it. They said everything was great. They just needed more potatoes. They didn't even know it was turnips. So that's another alternative. You could also just grind up and make it with a... Uh, mashed potatoes, kind of like we were saying earlier, with cauliflower, make a cauliflower turnip mash, it would kind of give it a nice little sweetness to it. Um, so a lot of things. Uh, so right now, let's make this cocktail. So I'm going to take out my fancy ice, which it's not as big as an ice cube as I would like, but I don't have space in my freezer, so I haven't been able to make my ice. If you've ever watched my ice video, he's the cooler type of thing. So this is actually from Joe actually got me this ice cool ice cube maker thing. It works pretty well. So we'll have that. Uh, we need a glass. Let's get our simple syrup. So this should be pretty cool by now. Yeah, it's good. So when you build a cocktail, you always want to start with the cheap ingredients first because if you screw up, no bubbles, no troubles, you didn't waste, you didn't waste a very expensive bourbon or anything like that by putting it in first. So we're going to start with Got the bitters. So let me grab the whiskey here. Let's use the four whiskeys. All right, so this is a very sort of classic old fashioned with a, si with a slight change with the rosemary syrup. So I do an ounce of rosemary syrup, spill it everywhere, do a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. You could use some different bitters, but I think these work really well. I like mine kind of strong, so four dashes of that. And then, four roses here. Great, cost-effective bourbon. The labeling is horrible, but it's actually really good. You can use whatever you want. I'm not going for a cask strength or like that, so just some decent bourbon. Doing two ounces of this. And then, since this is still tempering, I'll wash this out real quick. Now, the reason we let the ice temper is because if you see it's kind of cloudy. Um, if you want to switch real quick. Switch back. What that means is it's basically coming up the temperature with the world around it. If you were to put that in, it'd crack. This is like if you're running the cold water right now, it'd crack. Once it's crystal clear, that means the outside is basically, what's the word? Come up the temperature accommodated, whatever. It's all good. So just let that, you can, if you really want to speed it up, you can breathe on it. If it's going to be your cocktail, just <sighs> works, but we're not going to do that because we're probably going to share this. So this is here. Where's my spoon? Give it a nice little stir. That rosemary definitely adds a nice, nice kick to it. I need to wash my peeler because we need an orange. Ironically, for some reason, we had trouble finding an orange, even though it's like orange season. Now, now that it's cold weather. Um, but the orange, it's not, it adds, it adds, it's not just looks, it's, it's flavor, aromas. So I'm get a nice big peel. So as you see this, so people will cut really deep into the orange and you'll get the pith. Um, if you want to switch over real quick. So people will cut really deep into that. I personally don't like a very stiff. It looks ugly. It doesn't really provide the aroma. So what I like to do is I like to scrape the pith off. So it creates a nice, more even, uniform look. And it also accentuates, accentuates, expresses. That's the word I'm looking for. Expresses the oils. And I don't know if you can smell it, but it definitely smells delicious. And for a nice presentation, I like to squirt it off. We have a nice little, nice little strip. So I'm going to save this here for a second while this ice continues to 
temper. But we'll just do this. It's my cocktail. Do you want one? No. I'll make you one. <laughs> so as you see, it's, it's clear now because it's starting to come up to temperature. Or it's clearer. So where's my spoon? So what we do here is we just basically lower it in the spoon like this so you don't splash it. And if it's too big, you can twirl around and give a nice little twirl. It's basically a spritz. You'll see that the, the orange spritz around the glass. That's the aromas. Wipe this corner. And then the one key thing that I think really ties an old fashioned together is a Luxardo cherry. Brand new bottle. So these are the cream of the crop, like creme de la creme. When you go to a bar, I'm going to tell you how I judge a bar. I judge a bar, one, by the bourbon they use, but that really depends on the bar. Two, by the ice, and three, by the cherry. If they're using Luxardo cherries, it's probably a nice high end bar. If you have a nice big chunk of clear ice, it's probably a high end bar. Um, but if it's somebody who's using like crushed ice, and those bright cherry red cherries, and they're charging you $15 for a cocktail, drink beer because you're wasting your money. <laughs> um, so if you go to new places, see what people are ordering, look at what they put on the old fashioned. Sometimes they might try to get a little crazy, um, which, you know, doing like this, and it has a specific type of bitters and like rosemary syrup and a rosemary few. Keep it simple. Um, personally, I like just having a small variation on it. I think this works really well. I actually used all my all my rosemary. So, yeah, so this is, let's, let's give this a try. Yeah, that's good. That rosemary just gives us a nice little, just very little herbal undertone when you go, ah, oh, what is that? Um, yeah, that works really well. Yeah, again, bar, look at the rice, look at the chairs. It's good. Um, any other questions? Um, Do you guys want a cocktail? Any cocktail requests? Try and cook something up. A gimlet. I don't have any limes. Uh, do I have gin? Joe, I need gin. <laughs> um, turn around and make a gimlet with a rosemary sip. I wonder how that would work, actually. Might be good. Might be good. Let's try it. Uh, so we do have limes. So I do need a, if you don't have a gimlet. So basically when you're making cocktails, there's a couple principles that you kind of learn. There's sort of the, the fruit juice, the acidity, the sweetener, and then the cocktail. For most of them, you switch something out and you end up going a different route. So for example, gimlet is really just lemonade. <laughs> it's basically a margarita. It's, you know, lime, simple syrup, gin. That's it. Nothing crazy. You switch out that gin with tequila, it's basically the margarita. Um, and I'm not talking margaritas with the Campari, not Campari, the, uh, uh, what's the orange liqueur? Uh, control. control. I actually don't like margaritas with Control. Or margaritas with white tequila. Um, that's another one where for me, a good bar is not using white tequilas for cocktails, You're using a nice aged uh, tequila. Any other questions in the meantime? Um, uh, Yeah, so for the people who missed earlier the rosemary simple syrup, it's a one-to-one -one sugar to water, and then you just throw some rosemary and let it simmer for a little bit. I added a little bit more water because I knew some of it was going to evaporate. Uh, don't bring it up to a boil, just a slow simmer, let it cook there for a while, give it a taste. Um, I used allulose because it's the low-carb sweetener alternative. You can use sugar. Um, I didn't add any xanthan or anything. I usually don't, don't typically bother with a lot of stuff when I'm making cocktails, I don't find it's, this knife is not sharp. I usually don't bother stuff when I'm making simple syrup, I don't find it. I know mouthfeel is one of those important things, but I don't find it adds anything specifically to it, so. Here we go. What so adding smoke to your drinks? Adding smoke to your drinks. You can do that, uh, well, if you're doing, I, I'm gonna approach it from two perspectives. There's smoking your alcohol, then there's adding like liquid smoke. I don't know why I'm so far away from the camera. Um, 
Adding liquid smoke, never tried it. It could potentially work, but that stuff is very potent. I think you'd have to add it to a lot. Um, you could also smoke your alcohol. You basically just put it like in a smoker and burn some chips. Um, I know some people who've done it. Uh, Curtis has done it, Curtis with Sports Cambers online. And it works really well. I don't have any experience with it because I don't have a smoker, but uh, it can work really well. This stuff is really good. So I'm gonna make this gimlet. I need my shaker cup. That cup. And what were the cherries called? What were the cherries called? The cherries are Luxardo cherries. Now these are stupid expensive. Uh, <laughs> this bottle is like 25 bucks. It's not cheap, um, but it's it comes with a lot. It looks like this. Actually, let me show the other camera. Looks like that. Um, they come in big cans too. It also works really, really well on cheesecake or just with cream cheese. So it's super dangerous to a certain degree. Not low carb. So if you're really strict on low carb or keto, just have one, one or two. Um, yes. So how long you can store the simple syrup? I have had simple syrup in the fridge for months. That said, you have to be very careful. Um, I find that erythritol goes bad quicker. I find that allulose can sit there for a long time. I don't recommend it. It just, uh, if you keep it for a while, keep it in the fridge, don't leave it outside. Because outside it's just, it's ripe for, for, for mold and all sorts of stuff, even if it's not real sugar. Before you use it, just check it if you see anything floating in there. You do, don't drink it. You know, use common sense. Don't be too crazy with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've stored them for a while. I've also, I've had some so long that it actually evaporated. <laughs> so I definitely recommend you use sort of these bottles, with the snap caps. Um, one thing I used to do as well was sort of keep, uh, keep old alcohol bottles with the cork, which they look cool, but unless you use it quickly, it evaporates. Like I said, get these snap cap bottles at Ikea, stupid cheap, not great glass, but they work. And they're, I mean, I've, they work great. I can't complain. So we're gonna do an ounce of lime juice. Come on, I'm gonna need more. Do you need those two limes? No, okay, so I'm gonna use the whole one here. Again, you want to start with cheap ingredients first in case you screw something up. You don't feel bad wasting a very expensive cocktail. Alyssa asks, or no, I'm sorry. Chris asks, is that a spoon in your pocket or are you just super happy? I'm just super happy. I don't have a spoon in my pocket. We're, we're, what spoon? I don't know. That's a, what spoon are you talking about, bro? What spoon are you talking about? It's all squats. So we have some lime juice. We're going to do some simple syrup. We're gonna use a rosemary syrup. Do an ounce of that. It's about an ounce and a half, ounce of lime juice. Typically it's lemons. I don't like lemons. I don't know why. They only work well with fish for me, because I think that's where they belong. So that, and then we're gonna do two ounces of beef feeder. Beef feeder is a more floral, per se, I guess, or it's kind of in the middle between juniper heavy and floral. Cocktails, not cocktails, gin. Uh, as far as gins, I really like St. Augustine's gin. I don't know why. It's very floral and it just, it really hits my palate really well. I'm not sponsored, I've been there, it's a great place. I don't like their bourbons, don't know why, but their gin I think is fantastic. So, put this ice in here. Now technically I should have iced this down, but do it. Any other questions while I shake this? Say what? Recommendations for non-alcohol versions of the drinks? Recommendations for non-alcohol versions of the drinks? Lemonade. Yeah, for non-alcoholic versions of these drinks, it's kind of difficult. I, I try to stay to cocktails that are, uh, I don't want to say spirit heavy, but I'm a big fan of drinking stuff neat. Tequila, I love tequila neat, especially good tequila, which most people have never had a good tequila, but once you've had, I think it converts a lot of people. Um, so 
glass is this. Pour this puppy out. This glass, also from Ikea. Then, yeah, Ikea works great. How long did I bartend? Never bartended. Strictly, strictly a, a, a passion. If Joe's still on, he's, he's a much better bartender than I am. I think he got quite an extensive collection. It's interesting with the rosemary soap. It's definitely interesting. It's a little unique. This is a little lime heavy, a little lime forward, but it works. Um, coming off camera for a second here. Uh, any, other, any other questions? Uh, so look, recommend a good tequila. Recommend a good tequila. So I, I really like tequila. I haven't gone too, too deep down that rabbit hole. Just like bourbon, people ask me, what kind of bourbon do you like? I'm kind of like, I don't really have a, a specific. Um, I know what I don't like. I don't like a very peaty bourbon. I don't like a very smoky bourbon. Same would apply with tequila. Um, some, of the, some of my favorites, Casa Noble is a fantastic tequila. Um, the Espolón Añejo is really good. If you don't know anything about tequila, so there's white tequila, which is not aged. That's typically used for cocktails. I don't like it because it has no flavor. Reposado tequila is basically white tequila that they've added color to it. Really not much of a difference. Uh, an aged tequila, Añejo, is aged tequila for at least a year. The difference between tequila and mezcal is tequila is made from a specific region in Mexico with a specific plant sometimes, uh, but it's really just overall the, the umbrella of mezcal. So I don't have a specific one that I like. I did try one once that was in a, at a New Year's Eve party and just very drunk. But uh, somebody brought him, they, he's, he's a liquor distributor. And he had this bottle in the freezer with this little old woman on the front cover. The label's falling off. He's like, I have this special stuff here. It's one for special people. And he pulled it out. And like four of us did a shot of it. And it was the first time I ever tried really good tequila. And I go, what is this? No need for chaser, nothing. I was like, this is fantastic. That's, I don't know. I'm still looking for that tequila. I've never seen it. It must be called like Abuela's Tequila or something, but it, that thing was fantastic. Super smooth, just unbelievable. But Who's birthday is? Chris Miller. Chris Miller. I don't, I don't know if I want to do a shot. I'm still cooking. <laughs> so I just checked on the turnips. Uh, I wish I could show the camera, but I can't. It's, uh, they're looking good. Cheese on top hasn't started melting or anything. And that, what I have noticed with this dish is if you kind of watch the top when it starts getting brown, um, it's almost like the cream provides enough moisture that it doesn't let the cheese on top brown. If that makes any sense? Um, but uh, so yeah, we're, we're looking good there. It's going to take some time. So while I kind of clean up here, let's start getting ready for this duck. Any, any other questions coming through? Uh, can you recommend a bad tequila? Yeah, anything with a worm, anything with a red hat. The worm is a joke. The scorpion is a joke. It's a gimmick. Don't ever buy those unless you really want to waste your money. And anything with the hat. I think it's called a photo or something like that. Oh, that's the worst thing ever. It's kind of like the equivalent of Popov. If you've never had Popov, that's like drinking rubbing alcohol. Just, ugh. No offense. I mean, it's, it's, it's a college vodka. But she... Ugh. Jello shots with that stuff is just atrocious. If anyone's ever done it, don't, ugh, don't do it. It's horrible. For the old lady tequila, what did the bottle look like? The bottle looked like it was, for the, for the old lady tequila, what, the bottle looked like it was an old white or clear wine bottle, and it looked like somebody had literally glued the label on. I don't know where it came from, but I've been on that search for some time now. I don't, I don't even think you can get it in the States, to be honest with you. It might have been something that was like smuggled in from across the border. For all I know. Got a 99 cent tip from Devin. 90, <laughs> 99 cent from Devin. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, well, thank you, Devin. Uh, who else is cooking along? Who else has turnips in the, in the oven cooking, getting ready? Or what else is everybody else working on for Thanksgiving? This is part of the AMA section as everything is cooking. It's kind of like that lull before the storm. You know the beer? Any beer recommendations out there? 
This is the. Uh, still, still have requests for you to do a shot. Terrapin, who's who's requesting for me to do a shot? Uh, Jason Decree. Of course, it's Jason. Son of a. <laughs> Terrapin Duao, great beer. I'll have it every so often. It's super delicious. It uh, what does it have? Like mango in it or something like that? Yeah, mango orange, bunch of tropical. Stuff. Mango orange, tropical stuff. It's not an IPA, right? Or is it an IPA? It is an IPA. It is an IPA. It is an IPA, but it's not like the. Uh, it's the actual Hawaiian flavors. So pog, passion. The actual fruit, Hawaiian orange, flavors. Guava. Passion, orange fruit, guava, whatever. It's a whole bunch of stuff, but it's not like the bitter IPAs that we had for years there for a while, where it was just like how much hops can you throw into something. So it works really well. Um, let me see what we have with this timer. Turkey cookers. Turkey cookers. Lasagna cookers. Lasagna. Anybody doing something non like lasagna, non traditional for Thanksgiving? Last year we did like a taco, taco thing. Um, I know somebody who's making Curtis. He's making like a full fledged like around the world uh, Thanksgiving lineup. Like he showed me the list, and I was like, "What is?" He's like, "Who's bringing all this food?" He's like, "I'm cooking." I was like, "Crazy, bro." <laughs> he's been cooking for like a week. Backwards bastard. The beer industry is interesting. I think we've got away from the. We definitely moved away from the IPs. We're definitely more in the imperial stouts now, which is almost too too. I want to say barrel centric, barrel forward. Um, I love stouts. I love imperial stouts. I love barrel stuff. So it's almost too much. And you have those little little goblets that knock you on your ass. A little bit too strong. Deer chili. There's a deer chili. Somebody sent me, I wonder if it's in, sent me a, a recipe for deer chili. I told them I haven't had any venison yet, but when I get some, we're definitely going to be making some, some, some deer chili. I do have some goals for this coming year. I do want to do some wild game cooking, hopefully some turkey, deer, hogs, maybe even squirrels. I hear squirrels absolutely delicious. Never had it. Rabbit, rabbits, if you've never had rabbits, really good. Especially like a nice uh, red wine, uh, what's it called? Rabbit a red wine stew type of thing is delicious. Super lean meat. You have to kill like 15 of them. Um, need to do some goat too. There's a lot of stuff to cook out there. A lot of, a lot of low carb, keto friendly meats and stuff that we just got to get to. Um, just got to get to them. Any other questions? As we kind of sit here and wait for, for some of this stuff to cook. Any more cocktail requests? We, we have a, someone looking for scotch recommendations. Scotch, I can't tell you. I don't got anything. Okay. I know a guy, but that's okay. We'll Jason might have better scotch recommendations. He's in the chat. Unless it's him asking. Um, we, also, <laughs> we also have uh, Cornish hens. Standing Cornish hens. hens. Uh, we have pizza. Pizza. Pizza's we have good. Biscuits, lemon bars, pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread, lemon bars, biscuits. Yeah, so as far as the pizza, I it's going to be not a hot minute. I'm going to attempt version three here in the near future. Knowing how much work went into version two, I'm, I'm a little, not hesitant. I'm just, I have to mentally prepare myself for the, the length of time it's going to take me for the next version. Um, the ideal for me is to get something that's gluten-free, Lower in carbs, because almond flour is pretty high in carbs to a certain degree. Um, and more, more bread-like. It's going to be hard without the gluten. I think the almond flour, we just have to find the right thing, the right combination of protein. Um, maybe psyllium husk can work well. Maybe good oat fiber. That's the other thing, too, is you start getting huge variations between brands. Lupin flour is one where you see a huge difference between brands. So, especially in ancient grains. Yeah, well, the thing about a lot of those ancient grains and stuff is that they're not low carb. I know somebody suggested eggplant flour or something like that, but that's not, uh, that's not low carb. Or like cauliflower flour, rice flour. Rice flour works really well. If you've never had cauliflower pizza, like a gluten-free, they're really good, but they're not very low in carbs. So. Rice paper. What about rice paper? Rice paper could work. I don't know how many carbs in rice paper. I still have some rice paper here from when I did that, that cook cast with, with, uh, with Vicky. Um, if any of you ever watched the cook cast, let me know if you'd like to see them again. I think that'd be interesting, because back then nobody was watching the channel, so nobody believed me that I actually had a good food channel. I was like, oh, how many of you got? A thousand subscribers. Okay, buddy. Um, 
Because my idea was to start getting like chefs and stuff on here and having like trying to cook low carb stuff. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of noise in chat looking for that shot. A lot of noise in chat looking for that shot. I feel like it's just Jason. Jason. It's not. I'm not. Oh. It's really okay. it, if there's kids watching, I can't. I can't take shots. I can only so drink. Chris Miller. Just say it's uh, it's Kool Aid. I don't even know what to do a shot of. Uh, man, I have so many, so many liquors, and I don't know what to do a shot of. I do have some cask strength whiskey, which that is, that is literally diesel fuel. Some strong stuff. Now, does it smell like Christmas in here? Does it smell like Christmas in here, Aaron? It smells really good. I only smell computers. I only smoke. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's funny. So I'll I'll post a picture through the command center that I have of Aaron over here. I actually dropped on my monitor setting up yesterday, so it's Gonzo. Um, so that sucks. But uh, ideally, I'd like to do more lives and have more cameras with the mics actually working. I'm contemplating doing some guest, guest cookings, cookings in here. Um, if you've ever seen the cook cast with Rishi, Rishi's a really good cook. Brings a lot of that Trini, Trini experience. Um, very spicy, very good stuff. His shrimp curry is fantastic. It's probably the only person who's ever cooked shrimp that I actually enjoyed. Juju Pez says you should do bourbon, a bourbon shot. I wonder who that is. No idea. I don't, I, I don't think I'm going to do a shot at this point. We'll, we'll save it. We still got some, got about 60 minutes on that other duck. The other duck's in the fridge. The turnips have. Uh, He's already cursed in front of the children, so shots are okay. Already, already cursed in front of the children, so shots are okay. Yeah, I'll think about it. Um, yeah, any other cocktail requests? Any other questions? Uh, Everclear? Everclear. Heck no. Ugh. I'm not doing that. I'm not in college anymore. Even in college, I didn't do that stuff. There's a point where you go like, look, man, I'm not doing this. It's kind of like when you're at a party and you look down and you go, I don't remember refilling my glass. That's when you, <laughs> that's when like shots and stuff are done. Like you shouldn't keep going. It's over. Your night is done. You should start hitting water because it's not going to be a fun morning the next day. I'm not sponsored by Bang. But if somebody from Bang or knows somebody from Bang, I'd like to set up a fridge with a bunch of Bangs. I think it'd be awesome. Also, why are you not in Costco anymore? You're killing me. Partnership with Bang would be fantastic. Any other questions coming through? Uh, Should have planned a dessert. I don't have anything quick to make. I don't know what keto chow is, but keto chow. a couple people mentioned keto chow. Uh-huh. Keto chow is good. I know I've told Chris this. Chris is the kind of the creator of keto chow. Is that I wish I'd had it when I worked in an office. Because I would have just made it, made it for the week, gone to the fridge, grabbed a bunch of stuff during lunch and made it. I've, I've always... The past couple of years, I've always worked with international teams, which means time zones are very weird. Um, so there's always like meetings overlapping, and keto chow works great for that stuff. Unfortunately, now I work at home, so I don't have to. I can just grab a quick protein shake type of thing. But it works great. I know Steve over at Serious Keto has been doing it for make ice cream and stuff. It sounds like it works really great. It has a lot of the core ingredients you would need for ice cream, so I've been meaning to play around with it. I need to get some more actually. Um, yeah, stuff works. It's great. What flavor of bang are you? What flavor of bang am I drinking? This is the protein one. This is the Mocha Madness. They have a lot of new flavors that I don't particularly like. They're overly sweet. I think since they got acquired, I think it was Pepsi. I've noticed their stuff is getting sweeter. I don't know if that's just because the general palate of Americans tends to be, requires more sweet. But their original stuff, which is literally made for like athletes, it's like, I need caffeine. It doesn't need to be colored. I just need caffeine, creatine, those sort of stuff. It's really great, just not too sweet. Um, yeah, the protein stuff works really well. I know this is big when like the whole paleo stuff was going on, but protein and energy. Um, I think there's about 300 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. I found my upper limit of caffeine is about 800 milligrams in 30 minutes. Otherwise, I start having heart palpitations. Like you can actually feel your heart. Ooh, I just the microphone. It starts getting really, really finicky. It's like, oh, okay, well, this, this, uh, this got hard quick. Or, this got whatever. All right. Let's see here. Any other questions coming through? Julie keeps saying, love curry, pot curry. Love. Pot curry king. 
Love Curry Talk Curry to me? Is that what it was? Just Love Curry Talk Curry. Love Curry Talk Curry. Curry, Curry's, uh, Curry's interesting. Because all it is is just, it's a combination of spices. Red Curry Penang, Thai Red Curry Penang is delicious. Green Curry Penang is delicious. Um, what's funny is I remember the revelation that, uh, so growing up we always had a, it was a, what do we call it? It's basically a meat stew with spices and stuff and potatoes. And I never particularly liked it. And then we had goat curry uh, with a friend of mine at a Jamaican place. I was like, oh, this is the exact same set of spices. And that's when I realized, like, a lot of the Caribbean cooking is literally the same. We just call it different things. Um, yeah, curry's good. It's just a bunch of different curries. Chris Miller said, make my favorite drink called the Commonwealth. I asked him what that is. The Commonwealth. Make the favorite drink Commonwealth. I don't know what the Commonwealth is. Let's see if he, he responds. I'll just do a, I'll pull the trick where it's like rum and coke and like this isn't common. I was like, well, this is how we make it here. <laughs> if any bar ever tells you that, tell them you're good and you'll have the bottle of beer because it's not. <laughs> I remember, so Rishi and I went to a bar once and uh, this girl must have been brand new. Like, I think I asked her for, a, for an old fashioned, very basic cocktail. She goes, how do you make that? I was like, oh, you're used to like the college age, like rum and coke. Uh, Sprite, and, Sprite, and whatever. Um, yeah, it was very funny. Cause she also asked us what game we wanted to watch because it was a Sunday, and we don't really watch football. And she goes, "Oh, what kind of men are you?" I'm like, oh, well, the men who like to race and fight and shoot guns and, <laughs> and punch things and lift weights. Not the not the football kind. What is your favorite Thanksgiving dish, keto or not? What is my favorite Thanksgiving dish? Potatoes gratin, hands down. That I could eat that entire thing all by myself. I couldn't care less about the turkey. It's potatoes gratin. And then as a dessert, pecan pie or pecan pie, depending on where you're from. doesn't matter. Um, those are two of the best. I, I, I need to make a low-carb pecan pie. It's, it's, it's on the docket, but it's another one. It's kind of like the pizza, I feel like. Getting the right pie crust is the difficult. I know a lot of people have been working on it, and a lot of people claim to have good ones, but I've gotten a lot of emails recently about like shortbread cookies and stuff and then not being really as promised, um, that's the one thing about low carbon keto cooking, you'll see pictures that look delicious, then you try and the recipe is crap. Um, it's one of the reasons why my videos take so long, because I actually want to make something that tastes good and is representative of what it's supposed to be. Of which chocolate chip cookies, incredibly difficult. I've tried for a good three months to make a good chocolate chip cookie. Nope, absolute failure. So that's, that's so anybody who claims to have a good chocolate chip cookie, don't believe them. Because if they did, we would all know about it. Just FYI. But another, uh, another question. Cocktail requests here. Uh, Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule. The Commonwealth is a Canadian whiskey, Grand Marnier, lemon juice, garnish with orange twist mix. Don't have any Grand Marnier, so I can't make a Commonwealth. Cuba Libre. Cuba Libre. I don't have Coke. Then do a shot. Then do a shot. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first one? It was a Moscow Mule. I actually don't know if I have any vodka. I do have vodka. I have, <laughs> so I have this vodka. I don't, I don't typically drink vodka. If you want to switch to the other camera real quick so people can see this label. If you've been around for a while, you know this is a very, very old bottle of vodka. <laughs> and as you can tell, it's barely been touched. Um, I took that from my parents for when I needed one of the, when I did the espresso martini. Um, do I have any more limes? No. Because the other line we need, so I can't do any Moscow mules. Super easy. I don't have any ginger beer either. I'm like a horrible bartender. I don't, I don't drink as much anymore. Um, we got uh, keto empanadas. Keto empanadas. Again, that's one of those, like, having that dough is so, is difficult. It's, oh, that's another one that I miss, empanadas. We used to have to like once a week with ground beef left over. You fry that sucker. Mmm. That's good. Then we have, uh, what else? Low carb coquito. I'm planning on hopefully doing that this year. Uh, I have to film. I have some other videos I'm planning as well. Again, it's one of those, I do everything so it's difficult to time wise to film, edit, plan, shoot, try the recipe. First off, get the recipe going. That's one thing I, I, I've been talking with Steve a lot about this too is so there's the video aspect of the stuff, and there's the administrative aspect of the recipes, posting the recipes. Uh, for this past video, 
it took me about four or five hours between writing up the recipe, calculating nutrition stuff, posting the website. So it's a lot of stuff that we don't see on the front end. It takes a lot of time, and that's not even talking about the recipe development. So I don't know if this pan is going to work. I'm going to try cooking this duck, kind of like how I said to cook it. Um, actually, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to put this in the oven first. I already said that. So this oven is at 375. Should do it around 400, but we're going to cook it like this to find out. So this is the duck that's been sitting in the fridge. It's a little dried out a little bit. We're going to dry it out even more because we don't want it to be moist. Moist is not good when cooking. So this, this duck, I need to figure out how to go duck hunting. It's funny, I've been talking to Jason about duck hunting and uh, the process of going duck hunting will probably cost you quite a bit for a duck. Um, but So the one thing with duck is when you start cooking it, you kind of want it with a cold pan because it renders out the fat. It's like I said, this is going to be kind of a reverse process of what the label said. The label said to, that label just doing just to, this is an odd way to cook up. We're going to duck or we're going to try to see what happens. This is a cold pan, so it's going to go into the hot oven. It's going to start to render that fat and hopefully start cooking this well. Um, actually going to do skin side down. Um, hmm, skin side down, not skin side down. Let's do skin side down. Start rendering the fat. Oven is at 375, not ideal, because we want it to be typically 400, but we'll see. we'll see what happens. So we're gonna let that cook, we're gonna pull it out, we're gonna sear it in the pan afterwards, try and get that nice, crisp skin, which is delicious. Don't ever throw the skin away on a duck. If you do, you are a heretic. I'm gonna put that in there for nine minutes since it's cold. Um, just like chicken, if you have chicken skins, don't throw them away. Put them in between two uh, two pieces of parchment paper. Or put put a sheet tray, baking tray, parchment paper, or no parchment paper. Skin, another baking tray on top. Stick it in the oven, 400, 425. Chicken crisps, absolutely delicious. Don't throw that stuff away. It's delicious. You shouldn't throw anything away. Just like don't throw away your bones because you can make a bone stock, chicken stock out of them. But it's work. But now in the winter, make a big pot. Stick it in there over the winter. Stick it over there while it heats and heats up your house. Smells delicious. So. We tend to throw a lot of stuff away. We shouldn't. Any other questions, cocktail requests coming through? Uh, we got a few, few requests of, of different natures. Uh, different natures. Different questions of different natures. Have, uh, I need to get you a mic next time. <laughs> dessert recipes using coconut flour? Dessert recipes using coconut flour? Um, if there's a specific reason you need to use coconut flour because you're allergic to almond flowers or something, coconut flour is a doozy. It soaks up moisture a lot. I'm trying to think of what you would use coconut flour. I mean, if you're making like a pastry type of dough or dough for something, or maybe like a cake, you have to add a lot more moisture. So a lot more fat, maybe more eggs, maybe more water, heavy cream. Um, I don't know what, what you could, besides a cake, I don't really know what you could do. Pastry, pastry dough, you don't really have. I know a lot of people ask for croissants, but truth of the matter is, is I know nobody's gonna make croissants. And if you've never seen how difficult it is to make a croissant, you're definitely not gonna make them. You're definitely not gonna make low-carb ones. <laughs> it, is, it is a process. Um, one of my favorite YouTubers, Alex, French guy, who just goes by Alex now, he did a whole series on croissants and it, it, it is stupefyingly hard. Just folding it over so you start getting layers and layers and layers and butter between them. Layer. It's, you're not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Um, it would simply be an adventure in, is it possible? So it would be interesting, but... Jay Jimenez is looking for Mofongo relleno. And those Jay Jimenez, Mofongo. Mofongo is literally going to be impossible because it requires plantains. Plantains are iron sugar, so it would be low carb, but definitely not going to be keto. Um, that's the problem with a lot of like Caribbean slash Hispanic slash Latin dishes is they have stuff that's just inherently high in carbs. Plantains, um, yuca. It just, it just, there's no way. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing low carb, sure. But if you're doing keto, it, it would literally be a spoonful before you hit your carb count for the day. Because it's just, it's so heavy in carbs. Then we have a few drink requests. A few lemon drink requests. Martini. Lemon drop martini. Sour. Whiskey sours. Rusty nails. Rusty nails. What's in a rusty nail? I always forget. Scotch plus drambuie. 
Scott Pistrin. A follow up question to that. Any ideas how to make fake a keto jamboree? Any ideas how to make a fake keto jamboree? No. Um, and again, if I go silent, it's because Aaron's reading the chat to me. Um, I don't have any scotch, so I can't make that. The whiskey sour, they're pretty straightforward. Um, I do have. Oh, we don't have any more limes. <laughs> like I said, horrible bartender. Hey, I don't have enough stuff here to make cocktails. Um, yeah, just like, dry shake and egg white. Throw in the stuff, makes it it's a whiskey sour. If you want to make a Boston sour, um, a whiskey sour without the egg, a Boston sour with the egg. And if you want to make it a New York sour, just drizzle a wine float on top. Those are really good. I actually really like New York sours. If you've never had them, it's really good. It's a nice little variation. Gives a little bit of the that wine sort of dryness to it. Really good. It's a nice little wine float. Any other questions? Um, more, couple more questions about the master class. Um, more questions about the master class. When is it? When is it? I haven't. I have the curriculum for the master class, the ice cream master class kind of laid out. I haven't started recording anything. The one thing is, is it's not going to be in the vein of my typical videos with the humor. It'll be much more educational, like going through stuff. Very scientific. Um, I don't know if I made this clear in that video, but I, I went down the rabbit hole. I, I mean, there's, there's literally research papers on ice crystallization and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's a whole world, the ice cream thing. And turning that, ice cream in itself is rocket science, and so then making low-carb keto ice cream is even more complicated because you have the different uh, sweeteners, the erythritols, the allulose, the different types. Um, Boca sweet, bocha sweet, I never know how to say it. All sorts of stuff. And then you have the softness. This, it, it's, it is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Ice cream is, is what we know as ice cream. There, there's a common misconception of, uh, I don't need all these ingredients in my ice cream, just milk, cream, sugar, and vanilla. That's not going to yield the ice cream that you know as ice cream. Ice cream as we know it is very different from this quote-unquote old-fashioned like churn, like I made this in the front porch with ice and cow milk. It's not the same. Uh, what we know is just so different from that, and it's just like the mouthfeel, the texture, the, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it gets even crazier once it gets to the low-carb world. When that's going to be, hopefully soon. Um, again, kind of making these recipes requires a lot of time which takes away time from making a master class type of thing. So, um, yeah, hopefully soon. Maybe I'll just take a week off of work. <laughs> I wonder if anybody from I work with is watching, like, what, he took a week off? Like, I thought he said he was going hiking. <laughs> nope, making ice cream master class. So, two related questions. Two related questions. How do you feel about what's happening with his cousin in the oven and any way to make a keto copycat recipe for Bang Bang Chicken from NBC Sports Dark Bar and Grill? How does chicken feel about her cousin in the oven? I need a way to make a Bang Bang Chicken copycat recipe. I haven't seen the copycat recipe. I haven't seen the Bang Bang Chicken, so I wouldn't know how to make a copycat recipe of it yet. Chicken has no idea that the cousin is in the, in the oven. Uh, speaking of that, ironically, there was a... Uh, so, come on, stop. Um, they all fly south of the winter, so... It's like that cousin that comes to visit once a year. It's like, hey, I'm here. It's like, oh, get right out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> so she might be kind of happy. Who knows? Who knows? Might be one of those, those cousins that she doesn't really like. But yeah, some ducks in the oven. Let's see what it's looking like. It's getting there. The turnip, the turnips, gratin are cooking. The other duck is in the sous vide container, which I'm going to bring here in a second. That should be cooked. I cooked it at 130 degrees. It's going to be medium rare. It's perfect. Again, if you don't have a sous vide cooker, they're a lot cheaper now. They're actually really good. You can get uh, you can pasteurize eggs. You can cook beef. You can cook beef to like, the perfect temperature every time, all the time. You never have to worry about, like, oh, is it raw? Am I going to get sick? No, you just let it cook for a long time. It works great. Chicken works really well. You can make carrots. You can basically make everything. Um, and one thing that I really like the sous vide immersion cooker for is tempering chocolate. Very tempered chocolate, the double boiler, whatever, it, it's, it's a mess. It's never accurate. If you go past a certain temperature, your chocolate is no longer tempered. It's a mess. You set your CV cooker to the temperature, pff, let it go. Perfect. Perfect every time. It's going to take you a little bit longer. It's going to melt the chocolate, but it, it works fantastic. That's, that, is, that, to me, is one of the most hidden features that no one ever talks about with a CV cooker is tempering chocolate because that, that's a pain. Any other questions, Aaron? And then our next uh, bartender request is Klingon Bloodline. A 
what? Klingon blood. Klingon one. blood one. Yeah. Who's who's asking that one? Is that the Blaine? Uh, that's Chris Miller, and then Chris the second Miller. is by Blaine the Keto Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a Klingon blood one. Well, that sounds interesting. I feel like we could probably use. What kind of blood could he use? Duck blood, maybe. Pig's blood. Swine blood. Like blood sausage. Use that. Be a nice, thick, hearty drink. <laughs> it's just, <ugh. laughs> nice and thick and coagulating as you're going through it. Oh, that sounds horrible. Just, ugh. 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 No. Any other questions? Instant pot recipes? Instant pot recipes. I don't have an instant pot. Let me, get, let me grab this, this piece of duck over here. I don't have an instant pot. Um, I never really saw... I don't want to say the merit in it, but it feels like it's a, it's a lot of things in one. It's like a pressure cooker or the, all sorts of other stuff, but uh, I don't know. I just never got one. And they're also really big, which takes up a lot of counter space, which I know people will say, you have a lot of counter space. Like, I do, but at the same time, I don't. So this timer's going off. So if you notice, I'm actually sous vide cooking in a cooler. So just like a cooler can keep your things cold and keep your things hot. Works great. And it's multi-purpose. So that's been cooking at 130. Just got everything wet like a dope. But yeah, so this cooler works really well. Um, the sous vide containers that they have specific, like the type of plastic, the big container, the lids, they're really expensive. And I'd probably end up using them for storing stuff. So it seems kind of like I'd have to empty it out every time I wanted to cook something with it. So this cooler worked great. I don't know if it's damaging the, the plastic or whatnot. It probably is, but I'm still alive. And besides that, everything inside of the other plastic, so it doesn't really matter. So that's there. Let that cool off. Now, there are some tricks once you sous vide things to freeze them. Like put them in ice cold water to kind of get the, the skin and stuff nice and cold so when you sear it, it doesn't actually um, continue cooking the meat on the inside. It's so basically cold, comes up to temperature as it sears type of thing. Um, I'm gonna put this in the freezer for a little bit while we look at our other piece of duck. Typically, you probably put that in ice water, but we'll skip it for now. Any other questions in the meantime? The sous vide countertop robot? Yeah. What is a sous vide countertop robot? Yeah, that was my thought. I feel like there's something weird there. And like, oh, he doesn't know what a sous vide countertop robot is. Like, whoa, whoa. like I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. This is like one of those questions you ask people on a news, on like a news program. Like, oh, do you know what so and so? It's like I don't know. They're like, how do you not know about whatever? It's like I don't, I don't. I try to stay away from the news and all sorts of gadgets and stuff. What's the subreddit for that? Like kitchen gadgets? I have no idea. Probably. <laughs> All right, let's get this turn. All right, so as you see, this has rendered quite a bit of duck fat. If you want to switch over to the other one real quick. This is the skin. So see by doing kind of the cross lattice, you can kind of see it kind of curled up a little bit, but not too much. So it's not too bad. So we're basically going to, I need to be careful not to touch it because it's hot. Turn this on. This cast iron, this is the induction stove top, so it'll be fine. We're gonna do, cook the sucker high, or medium high. So what we really wanna do is, we could also use a torch to kind of scorch the top, but we also use this pan to cook the other, duck. Um, let's actually take a temperature reading this. See where it's at. I was going to spray everywhere. This would be a disaster. I wouldn't even need a new apron after this. Eh, it's around 120, so it's almost there. We'll get there. Um, the beauty about these induction ovens, and some of my hesitation of it, is when you're cooking duck, you want to start with a cold pan because it brings up the temperature slowly, renders that fat. The induction oven is bringing it up to speed really quickly. So I, this may actually not be good for duck. I don't know. 
We'll see. It's already splattering everywhere. I'm trying to step away. It's probably going to, well, I was going to say it's going to throw the fire alarm off, but I don't have a fire alarm. So, tip, don't take the fire alarm off. I don't know if anyone's ever watched the, uh, the BOGO ghee recipe that I did from, um, oh, what's that lady's name? She does like a home cooking show with her husband. Oh, I can't remember her name. Magnolia Table. It was out of that book, but uh, that BOGO ghee smoked up the entire house. I actually had to throw away the grate because I burned so much of the, <laughs> I burned so much of the Chip and Joanna Gaines, yes. I burned so much of that, that, that grate that I had to actually throw it away. It was that bad. Like, I tried scraping it. There was no, no if, if, ands, or buts. No. So this, I just want to switch to the camera real quick. I want to press it in there, get that skin ow, nice and uh, crispy. It might be a little bit soft to touch, a little crisp as, you, as it cools off a little bit. Just be aware of that. Again, don't, don't throw this duck fat out. The stuff works fantastic for eggs, for fries. Um, I've actually talked to Steve over at Smoke Shows, like I talked about earlier, about doing a duck fat infused brisket. Because now one of the things that people do is they oh, smoke everywhere. Is, uh, can you open that door a little bit more? <laughs> it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a smoke fest in here. Uh, about doing people infuse tallow into their brisket. I call them about maybe using duck fat, kind of like a third duck and type of thing. So with brisket. Oh man, this is a hot mess. Uh, yeah, you can turn that panel. My camera's gonna get so dirty. I can see like the specks of, of grease flying everywhere. The things I do. So yeah, ideally you want this over a nice uh, flame thing, which actually I think I'm going to take over there because you guys can't see us anyways. So, uh, and Maria Some questions? Uh, yeah. So what I can add a about adding a guide into the description about uh, tempering chocolate and pasteurizing eggs. I've been meaning to film how to pasteurize eggs on a sous vide for a long time. It's actually super easy. It works really great for cocktails because um, cocktails are any sort of raw cookie dough type of thing. I know some people get really finicky about um, eating raw eggs. Ice cream works as well. Especially for that ice cream recipe that I made. You can use that or, you know, raw eggs if you want. But there is a risk of salmonella with raw eggs. It's very small, but it does exist. Yeah, it's on the docket to, to do. Um, tempering chocolate is a, is a whole other world. And that's a chocolatiers. And there's a reason they have their own names. I can't remember the temperature at the moment that you need to cook it at. I believe it's in the 110 range, maybe. All these numbers escape me. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy, pretty easy once you have it. So I flip the duck over, just get a little bit of color on the backside. Do a temperature check on this. Yeah, it's good. So this is definitely cooked. I'm gonna plate this up, let it rest for a little bit. And in the meantime, we're going to take out the sous vide duck. Give him a five minute timer. He's filmed in front of a live, live, live kitchen audience. Not really. Um, let's just get this thing out of the freezer. Now, this thing hasn't been sitting in the freezer for very long, but it's something. It'll work. Uh, now, you could keep the juices out of this and make a nice uh, pan sauce. I'm not going to do that. You can. Duck works really well with uh, sort of very sweet jams type of thing. You can take a just any sort of jam and pair it with it. Uh, we're not going to throw all this time away because it's about time. Time away. Um, da, 
da, da, da. picking the stuff out, picking out the seeds and stems. Uh, so here's a duck. It looks like a limp piece of meat. It's perfectly cooked. You can cook this for up to two hours. Ideally, you would let this rest in the fridge overnight, but we don't have that kind of time. So we're going to do skin down on the hot pan because it's already hot. You'd want to do this over a medium, medium hot. As you can see, not too many juices, very, very little. I want to switch to the camera real quick, just so people. So yeah, not much. Really wouldn't real much for, for a pan sauce. But yeah, keep the fat. You can uh, use it to cook eggs. You can clean it and store it. I should probably turn the pan on. Using the cherries with the duck. The Luxardo cherries? Yeah, it'd probably work. Um, you could probably do that, maybe add a little bit of wine, maybe a little citrus, they kind of cut through the fat. That is the one thing about duck, is it is very fat. It's one of the reasons why a lot of the pan sauces have lime, lemons, um, just the, ac the acidity, kind of cut through it. That always helps. Is it still smoky in here? I can't. <laughs> um, Luckily, it's nice in Florida, like we were saying earlier. It's, you can actually open up the windows. It's not sweltering hot with all the mosquitoes and stuff coming in. But let's take a look at this. Ideally, I'd have a, a stovetop pan, but that requires more cameras, which I don't have. Maybe eventually. I used to put the GoPro. I had like one of those suction cup things, and that was like the first video that I did, which is the omelet cam, or the omelet video. I like stuck a GoPro up in my vent, like looking down. It's like a 15-minute video on how to make omelets. It's crazy. Oh, how things have changed. There was like, it's funny because you go back and there's literally nothing in this kitchen. All the cupboards are, are empty. There's no, there's no nothing. There's literally nothing in this kitchen. Still no cover, no cupboard doors or cabinet doors, but, you know. Beggars can't be choosers. It's getting there. Definitely can't do that over here. The spray is so much fat. Any other, any other questions coming through? Uh, More cocktail requests that I'm not going to make uh, and shots that I'm not going to take. No cocktail requests, unfortunately. No cocktail um, requests. Any other questions since this is sort of an AMA to a degree? I keep watching. My hands are like greasy now. Uh, something about... Uh, something about... method of pasteurizing a raw egg. Method of pasteurizing a raw egg. It's, yeah, it's pretty, I, I think it's 135 for 40 minutes. Works really well. They will get a little cloudy. So it'll look a little funky when you crack them and they kind of separate a little weird. But it's pasteurized. You, you can't, can't ask for much. This skin is getting there. This is, I'm going to have to clean my stove after this. this, this uh, you can't see it, but it's, it's like a geyser over there. It's crazy. Yeah, I have a couple of recipes planned now for the holidays. I, I had a whole list of things I want to have something out every week, but it gets difficult. Time. Um, also work. Full-time jobs are always a, a doozy. Um, anything else coming through? Another request for alligator recipes. Alligator recipes. I feel like the alligator recipes are more of a novelty. I don't think many people are going to get gator. Get gator. What is the airspeed velocity of a what? A laden swallow. Of a laden swallow. Laden swallow or an African swallow? Unladen. Unladen swallow. I only know the speed of an African swallow. It's hard to say. <laughs> Have you ever considered a career in male modeling? Have I ever considered a career in male modeling? Maybe plus size male modeling. For the rest of us, Festivus for the rest of us. All right, let's see here. So this skin, it's crispy. You can flip it, give it some color on the other side. Bring this plate over here. Our potatoes are grotten, our potatoes. Our turnips grotten are looking a little, little feisty. They're looking a little, little, little dark. Turn them off. Let that cool up in there. Give this stuff a little color. 
Come around the back side. Doesn't need much. Ow. Have I have I read the Dorito effect? Yeah, or metabolical. Metabolical? What do I do? The Doritos are the fastest, like, how they pretty much engineered the perfect. The Dorito effect is how they engineered the perfect like, shit. Perfect shit. Like, Crunch, like, flavor. Flavor, flakiness. Gotcha. Like, Basically the perfect chip. Um, well, we need to find a perfect chip first that's low carb. That's the... That's part of the problem. Is, uh, it's not easy getting things crispy at all. It's crazy what things like flour and cornmeal do, but uh, make things crispy. Ooh, all right. Relax there. Let this cool a little bit. Let's see how this turned out. This skin will get hard a little bit, then we'll hit it with the torch. A torch. Any other questions? Ramen. Ramen? What about it? Will you make ramen? Yes, that's on my list. I, the thing with ramen is it's, it's things that build on top of each other. So it requires so much. It requires that tonkotsu, tonkotsu, ton, I always get it wrong. The pork, you have to make the pork, right? You have to make the eggs. You have to make the tare. It's, it's so many building blocks that to get it right, it's gonna take a while. And obviously we have the noodles, which need to be low carb, which shirataki noodles work really well um, for ramen. I've never had a problem with them. Ramen noodles are pretty much kind of flavorless to a degree. Uh, they just have to be the right noodle shape, really. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes in the ramen, kind of like pho. It's, well, pho is less building blocks. It's more like just one type thing. But ramen is just, it could literally take three, four days to make ramen the right way. Because um, you make the pork, take that to make the eggs. Do that for a day, then it just it builds on top of each other. That's just why ramen is so expensive. But uh, so this is nice and crispy. See if you can hear that. It's getting there. Um, the potatoes are out. No, yes, no, not yet. So we get that out. The I was gonna say I was gonna say the dessert. There's no dessert. Wow, wow. It's getting there. Should have made some creme brulee. It would have been taken forever to cool. It would have never worked. Just eat the orange. Just eat the orange. <laughs> well, that's not low carb, bro. It's not low carb. All right, so. These are potatoes. So they put probably a little more time. You can see if you want to switch to the other camera real quick, see if I can show you. So it's a little worse, so it could probably use a little bit more time. The cheese was starting to crisp up, so we pulled it. It was a little bit high in the oven. It probably had a little bit lower, it would have been better. Um, so let's cut into this duck. Let's see how it is. I drank my cocktail race, so I got nothing to drink. Oh, hear that? All right, so cut at an angle. If you want to switch angles. Yeah. You can switch back. So that's, that's like a good medium rare. This is the one that we cooked in the pan. The sous vide one is still kind of cooling for the time being, a little bit. Once we did cook it in the, in the, uh, the pan. You guys want to take a try? Your haul is like, I'm gonna, that's fine, it's cool off already. Here, I'll put it here. You can come grab it this way. So that's that one. Let's try the sous vide one. So the color is pretty, pretty similar. Probably because of the fact we cooked it on the, on the uh, cast iron. But yeah, like I was saying before, Duck is kind of like a red beet, so you can kind of cook it medium. It's really not going to be a big issue. Um, if you overcook it. So, duck falls, since it is kind of a game, it falls in that range of if you cook it too long, it's bad. If you undercook it, it's bad. But you can undercook it and still be good. 
especially with duck, because it has that nice, nice, uh, how is it? Okay, just salt, pepper, a little bit of time. Nothing, you, you, a good duck prepared well doesn't eat anything more than that. Mm. That's really good. That is really good. And again, since duck is so expensive, you don't really want to screw it up. But it's kind of difficult. A crispy spinach. Mm. Keto Asian flavors for the noodle recipe. I've seen what she's done. It's interesting. I will say she did not invent that. That stuff has been around for a long time, sort of these weird modernist uh, techniques. Although she claims she did. Uh, but I have seen, I did see also what Steve did with it with the chicken noodles and stuff. They do seem really good. I think that's, that stuff will really work, I think, for ramen and stuff. Um, I haven't tried it. What's ironic is I was actually kind of thinking of doing something along those lines with the glucomonin, which is how they make miracle noodles, and incorporating that through the pasta recipe and making kind of like a ravioli, 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 uh, something to give a little more, more sliminess, for, per se, for lack of a better word, to the noodles. Um, where are my plates? To kind of make a bit more lasagna, pasta noodle style thing. So that'll probably be part of the next iteration of noodles, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things, a lot of techniques we can use with. So this, this actually looks. So this is multiple layers. Again, this is the reason you use mandolin because it's very equal, very consistent. That's what I'm looking for. Very consistent in the slicing. You really can't get that with a knife. And if you do it together with a knife, you're going to be sitting there forever slicing three or four turnips because it just takes forever. Let's give this a try. Mm. This, is, this is where I share the food with everybody else. <laughs> That's really good. But, oh man. This duck, paired with this, get a nice cocktail. Pretty straightforward meal. You could definitely do it for more people if you'd like. It's definitely a variation of a traditional kind of Thanksgiving meal, but it is duck season. So your waterfowl is very, somewhat readily available. Uh, turnips are in season, so you can get these as well. It's wintertime, it's a wintertime root. So while duck is easy to cook, if you have the sous vide cooker, even easier. Just be aware of the mess you're gonna make with the grease, but don't throw it away. You can make eggs with the next day. Super delicious. Cocktails are great, but that's pretty much it. So stuff is delicious. Let me know what you liked and didn't like, what you're cooking. Let me know below in the comments. I appreciate you all showing up, and uh, it's time to eat. So thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, talk to you later. Ended? Ended.